Welcome to What's Your Voyage, a podcast where we have people on that are up to stuff and we have a chat about the voyage of their life. Enjoy. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Hamish McLaughlin Lesser. I have the video man, Owen Haig. How are we doing? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. And we have audio engineer extraordinaire, Bjorn Gur. Hello, everyone. And then we have the one and only. The man that is up to several things and they all come around to like the main point of making people's lives better and allowing them to fulfill their greatness and potential. We have Corey Boutwell. Bro, thanks so much for having me on the show. You're welcome. Thank you for flying over. I know you had other stuff to do, but thank you for flying over and making the time. Oh, bro, I wouldn't miss it. So give us a rundown. What is it that you are up to right now in your life as like part of your career? So like the main thing that I'm focusing on at the moment is my Overcome the Chaos program. Just absolutely jamming that. So that, my podcast, <laughs> so my social media, because that's like part of the business as well. Yes. But essentially, mm-hmm. Overcome the Chaos is this, man, just thinking about it, I get like emotional. <laughs> like, oh God. Um, it's, this, it's this program that I created for like business owners and entrepreneurs, essentially when they get stuck in like whatever they're doing to help them give them the tools, the accountability, the guidance, the plan, the structure and the routine to make sure that they obliterate whatever they're stuck in and that they upgrade their standards and they keep them consistently. And it's been so overwhelming (laughs) because of just like the results and the systems and everything and the effort that we've put through because it's been like years of building it and to see it come to fruition is magical. How did you get into like that world? (laughs) Oh, bro. How did yeah? Because like that's personal development, right? Your personal development coach is yeah. essentially on a one-on-one, or is it, is your medium like you have video modules, or is it like what's the what's the format? Yeah, super interesting. So um, the actual, I'll go to the format and then I'll uh, explain how I got to it. So the cool. format is uh, I do like I do like one-on-one coaching, I do group coaching intakes, and then people who complete the program and they love all the stuff go into another group after that for like monthly coaching. But we have like an eight-week program, which is essentially the first first four months of my coaching, just like intense self-awareness and personal development, all put into eight weeks. It's sort of like take someone from point A, if they've if they've like if they're like a snake that needs to shed all of their skin, it's like we shed all of that skin off, and you're a brand new snake with a mission, and you know what to get. So it's like coming back to nothing. Yes, as an experience. Well, well, kind of. I would say it's more like, um, if I had to summarize it in a sentence, death of the hero, birth of the king. I like that. Cool. Powerful. All right. So that eight-week program, you do that, and then you're like, what's the next bit? So after that, it's just like we do the exact same stuff, but um, we just go in a lot deeper and we just do it monthly because the eight weeks is like, there's a lot of work to do there. I mean, and it's three hours a week. Monthly. Yeah. Three hours a week. Yeah, it's like three hours a week. Over the eight weeks. Over the eight weeks. And then in the monthly program. Yeah, so then it's, it's just like two hours a month and then okay. like a call every single month. And we go through everything and that's called Modern Leaders Accountability Group, which is wild. It's so good to have everyone go for all the stuff. Like it's, it's, yeah, it's overwhelming and it's awesome. But how I got to actually doing it is sort of a long story, but I'll shorten it as no, much as we well. have to shorten it too much. <laughs> well, um, so I compete in fitness competitions and got a pro card naturally in the WBFF um, federation against people who take steroids, which was awesome. Um, what's a, what's that? Is that like a winner's card? Yeah. So like, so if essentially it sort of works like tennis. So you think about someone wins like an Australian amateurs open and now they have their tennis card. They can go compete in the US open, the Wimbledon Australian open, Europe open. They can go compete in all of the uh, big professional um, games in order to, you know, test to see what they've got, see if they're the best. So, in that category, which is awesome. And that was sort of like, I guess, hit that at the age of 26, 27, 29 now, and started, like, when I was in the early 20s, essentially had no idea what to do. I grew up, like, learning singing and dancing acting. I thought I was going to be a singer and dancing actor. I did that, like, my entire life until I hit to, like, 15, 16. Like, that was the goals. I, I was literally, like, finishing school early every single day for four days a week. Like, I was working. I've been working since I was 10 and like all these different things. And like, that was it. That was like the main goal of what it was going to be. Then 15 come, that's what I thought was going to happen. Parents split up, just some other shit happened. Whatever it was, life would, you need to work now, do this stuff. Went from getting paid like heaps of money for doing all that stuff to like nothing essentially. Yeah. <laughs> and doing work that hated doing. And like Yeah, well you were working in like metal, weren't you? Yeah, I was doing sheet metal work. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I listened to the podcast you with Callum. 
Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. great. Nice. So open. I oh, love how thank his you, formats. Are yeah, good. dude. And the, are stunned. You're so like open and vulnerable. Yeah. You with it. So, yeah. Creates a condition for it. Yeah. So good. Well, thank you, man. So, yeah, me and dad did not get along well at that time. We hate each other. Oh, yeah. Now we're best friends. But, um, yeah, we hated each other. It sucked. Like sweaty men in a shed, and I'm used to singing, dancing, and acting with beautiful people. That's day. such like a Contrast. juxtaposition, isn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah, from here to here. So, I spent the whole like next whatever time of my life trying to figure out what the hell exactly I wanted to do. I was like, oh, I want to be a pilot because they make money and get to travel the world. Study that. I was like, no, not doing this. I was like, well, the next Too thing I math. do. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude, the math is hectic. Oh, dude, it but is. I learned how to study and I learned how to figure stuff out. So that was awesome. Like that a, is a big thing. Learn analytical side of brain. Um, and then I studied business because I was like, well, it's a very generic degree. Like there's a lot of places I can go from that. And I would do want to run business and stuff like that. Got honors in that, kicked ass. I was like, woo, this is it. Worked in a business. I got here and everyone was like, wow, everyone is so sick, tired, depressed, and unhappy. What the hell? And during this whole period of studying at uni and um, getting like jobs in actual business, I competed a lot in bodybuilding competitions. That was the one thing that sort of kept me going. And, and during those times, every time I competed, I was like, why am I on fire? Every time that I compete, like my whole life is on fire. Like relationships, like my grades, um, like my work life, for what I'm studying or my personal development stuff, like everything is on fire right now. As in it's going well. Oh, yeah, yeah, like so good. And it sort of got to the age where I started like writing all of this stuff down and understanding like it. Like keeping a journal? Yeah, more like actually designing things to be like, okay, what's this thing that I need to climb? There's the structure, the plan, the routine. How do I need to organize my mind? What do I specifically need to think about? What's the self-awareness technique? I didn't really think myself as an analytical person, but I'm like, well, I'm so analytical. I need to know the finest little details of like Give me an example of that. Like when you were structuring for a goal. Um, Or for a goal, I just put everything into a spreadsheet. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, I would just like map out times and dates, be like time, what I've got to do, when I've got to do it, blah, 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 then put it into my calendar. So like obviously the clearest version would be like your workout routine. You'd have like... Oh, the yeah. times that you're doing it, exactly yep. what kind of meals. Do you, would you have like why? Like because they have a certain amount of calories and stuff like that? or Depending on your goals. So I don't think you really need to look at those too much unless you're like actually competing. Yep. It's more just like get healthy and your body will sort itself out in terms of that specifically. But yeah, so I wrote all these things out, figured out all these um, systems and stuff. And then... How'd you figure out your system? Dude, I, I don't was know. Was this like intrinsic? Was, like you just of, like, oh, I'm going to give this a go. Well, I would read really difficult books. Like and I'd what? do like... I'd what? read Frederick Nietzsche. Like, um, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, Crime and Punishment. Oh no, Crime and Punishment is Fyodor Dostoevsky. Um, Beyond Good and Evil, The Birth of Tragedy. So I read like all so those books. Fools, like... The heck Classic it? psychological, like... Oh. Just in depth. Yeah. Yeah, and I finished them, bro. And like some of them, like <laughs> that's a big thing. Yeah. Like, you say, yeah, and I finished it, but that's a fucking huge thing. <laughs> dude, like, how many books have you started and just not finished, dude? Some of those books took me a year. I don't even doubt it. And like, so I'm not kidding. I'd be a half an hour on a page sometimes. Oh, <laughs> wow. like, yeah. I feel dude, you. I, I feel have grown up with dyslexia, so I completely get you. <laughs> you know, you know what, like reading shit. Oh. You know what's funny? I'm an author, and I hardly read. You're an author. An what do you author, think? An author. author. <laughs> they said an author. I was like, what do you mean an author? You're reading your own writing all the time, man. That's what I mean. Like, I, I was able to publish a book, but me not reading a lot is because me, I also do analytical organizing of my life, you know? So I understand where you come from when you say that. It's like, yeah. Yeah. And then you got to schedule your reading time in or you never get it done. <laughs> yeah. So after you even do that, yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy. I live in my Google calendar. <laughs> <laughs> I am my Google calendar. Legit. If it's not there, it's not happening. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. I just think it just wipes off the face of the earth if it's not there. <laughs> yeah, dude, I like um I have it installed in a widget, it's such a hack on my phone. So all I gotta do is swipe left once and I can see my entire calendar. It's productivity yeah. hack, like turn off all your notifications, only keep your text message and your Google calendar on. I like coach people on this, like high level entrepreneurs, turn all your notifications off except for your phone, turn your widget and turn your calendar notifications on, organize your calendar. Bro, life can be changed. I'm not kidding. I don't know how I feel about turning off all my Instagram. I'm so addicted to it. I'm so addicted. You got a schedule to go in. That's (laughs) Did you? That one's gone. Wasted so much time doing that. On what? Oh, Snapchat. Oh, Oh, dude, I hate Snapchat. (laughs) I don't like the format of it. Yeah, fair. Apple's Uh, got that new silent um, thing on now where you can put it on silent. So mine at 10 10, uh, p.m. Like, yeah, it goes on silent. So I won't see notifications unless I want to, like if I really like go and open it again. I challenge you to turn that thing down to seven. <laughs> seven yeah. Turn it off. <laughs> turn it down to seven. <laughs> That's no, I think it's good. You got like, there's work and stuff you got to do in there. But oh, yeah. So why did you choose to read those books? Like they're not books that people don't 
you know, usually choose to read. Yeah, and there's more. Hero's Journey, um, The Origins, History of Consciousness. Like, there's some big books in there. And I got them all just basically from, you know, one of the most respected psychologists in the world is Jordan Peterson. I remember just watching a lot of him. I think a lot, a lot of men have gone through time. I was like, let's watch yeah, Jordan he's Peterson. Great. But he just mentioned a few things. He's like, and if you'd want to learn the problem to this decision and figure out your life and not how to go to the dark side and whatever this is, read this book. Then he'd say, oh, there's another thing. Whenever, read this book. And I was like, okay, I'll read all the books. Like, use bodybuilding discipline. Read all the books while I was studying at uni and... How old were you at that stage? Mm, early 20s, 23, 24. Yeah. When I first started and I just haven't stopped. And then what I did was I created a whole bunch of things around them. Then I'm like, okay, I've got to apply this to myself. And like I've been helping some people with things and I applied it to myself for a bodybuilding competition as much as I could with work, so everything. What, what do you mean you applied it to yourself? Like what book, what kind of things did you actually tangibly take out of them and apply? I'll go through some of those in a minute. I'll specifically talk about some of the tools that I created. I like to put using my program and stuff. I'll tell you about them. Great. I'll finish <laughs> this. Yeah, I'll tell you about them. So we'll figure out which ones that we actually want to talk about. Um, and then, yeah, once I created these things, won my program, did everything that I wanted to do, figured out exactly what I wanted to do. I already knew what it was and then just started doing it. And then people would ask me, they'd come up with problems. They'd be like, oh, this is the problem that I have. They're like, if we just looked at it like this and I'd show them, they'd go, oh my God, everything's changed. <laughs> that works and that has worked. And, and then, you're just doing that for friends. Yeah. Well, I just started just getting clients on board and then they'd be like, you have literally like changed my life doing this. You look any, any testimonials on my Instagram stuff. It's wild. Like I'm not posting that as in like, oh, look at me. I'm just, I'm trying to help other people to show that like you can get that too. Like it's so like hectic. Yeah, you're but, a guide. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. Like, I'm like Gandalf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're <laughs> no, the chaos. Is, is the stuff. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Well, essentially, if you think about the hero's journey and you understand it, uh, do you know much about the hero's journey? I know a bit. Like I've looked into what it is. Yeah, yeah. and I've watched a bunch of movies and <laughs> read things, so like well, I get it. But yeah, so go into it. Harry Potter and uh, Lord of the Rings are very similar, or yes. even, even Star Wars. What we think about it, uh, the main character, the Hobbit, leaves the Shire. Like he gets called to something. And he keeps going, no, I don't want to go. Harry's like, no, I'm not going to Hogwarts. Luke's like, no, I don't want to leave my planet. And then something happens which forces them into a new world. Luke leaves and goes somewhere else. Harry joins Hogwarts and the Hobbit is in the <laughs> the world of, you know, with the dwarves and all the all the crazy stuff going on there. And then one meets Gandalf, the other one meets um, uh, Dumbledore and the other one meets Obi-Wan Kenobi. So they're all the same position as like, you know. They meet a mentor. They meet a mentor, the wizard and the guide. And essentially um, all the stuff that I learned is you can do that for yourself, but you can also get it for other areas. And one thing that like I do with my programs is people who are ready to enter another world is sort of like they're at the gates and they just need to sort of kick through. And it's called like in old school terms, hero's journey terms, they call it initiation. And there was a lot of in like tribes, if you look at different tribes all around the world at the moment and ancient tribes and stuff, there were so many initiation periods of stuff like – um, I'm just trying to think of some examples. Like bungee jumping was one. You know, there's like tribes. You've seen stuff where bungee jumping come from. People jump from vines. They trap like tape wild. vines. Yes, that's what bungee jumping invented. There was like to become a man, you had to like jump off this thing with the vines attached to you to your legs, and you'd have to pick which one. And some of them you just miss and hit the ground. So in that tribe, I became a man <laughs> when I was like 14. <laughs> yeah, but they have yeah. all these periods. So they have like initiation ceremonies for like 14 year olds into manhood, like Aboriginals walk about. Yeah, there's huge ones huge there. I uh, I had a friend at high school, his name's Jordan, and yeah, he was telling us some crazy stories about like how they just like put people in a walkabout and they're like, bro, you're in the fucking wild, man. Like you got to survive. Did they snatch 14 year olds from their mums because they, a lot of time Aborigines, they stick to them a lot. They stick to their mums. They snatch them out, like blindfold them and stuff and carry them out in the middle. And they're like, if you come back in anything like more quickly than a year, like you're not a part of the tribe. And if they come back and they still can't look after themselves properly, they'll kill them. Like old school because but the part of the tribe was so small and the resources weren't that big that if someone couldn't take care of themselves, they would take it from everyone else and they wouldn't be like worth part of the tribe. So it was pretty full on back in then. So every single tribe and stuff has initiation ceremonies mm. and depending what you do, that's where like psychedelics and all that stuff come from as well. A lot of them are used as initiation periods, whether it's a wedding, birthdays, 
um, mit, mit any sort of maturity. And we've sort of lost that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's well, like, I was a pussy. Dude, you finish high school and you go get pissed for like two, three years before you try to figure out what the hell you're going to do. Like, <laughs> what a, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. Like, you're not it is. figuring shit out. See, you're I, just socializing. You're trying to kiss girls. <laughs> yeah. Like. I think even America in a weird way, like their college system is a good way because they're separating from the mum and the dad. And that's a whole part of like the hero's journey. There's two steps in there. One's called separation of the mother and mother meaning not just your mum, it's like, symbolism of what the mother is in your life yeah and a lot of old school things it's mother earth is the mother um and separation of the father is whatever the father category in your life and that is like a mentor business your actual dad like what, whatever it is um and you got to separate from both of those and i think that's really good in american culture people who do go to college because then they're forced to be away from their parents and be completely independent yeah that's what i did yeah good job man i went to gold coast as soon as school finished and went to bond just, yeah. It's around the corner for me. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You live in Vasu Lakes? No, I don't live in Vasu Lakes. I live in like Southport, but I go past there like all the time. No kidding. See, like, there it is. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Good spot. But yeah. Not quite right next to it, but yeah, not yeah, quite around the corner. There's a few corners. <laughs> it's pretty far. <laughs> but, but yeah. Um, so yeah, you separate from the mother and father. Most things great that you did that. You probably found that was like real good. But Oh yeah, it was huge. In Australia, like a lot of people just stay at home for ages. Yeah, they do. <laughs> no, Look at him, a cousin. <laughs> Look it, at it, Jim. Yeah, what are you doing about? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, what, what else is there really, like, almost to do if you haven't figured out exactly what you want to do? If you haven't got the resources to go out there and get there, it's, it's very hard to like even do that. So yeah, it's sort of like you know, with some of the coaching that I do, not taking that. There's heaps of other steps. They're at some point of the hero's journey, and they need to kick through it. And then yep. they sort of come to me. We help figure out all the systems and the tools, mindset-wise, and to physically do challenging, keep people accountable. And we go, pa! We kick them through, and it's awesome. Yeah. So, what kind of tools do you use? Do you use it from like, do or, actually? Let's go. How did you develop in terms of this course? So, obviously, you read a bunch of books, a lot of these classic literature books. Did you also read like psychology? Like, do you have you delved into ontology? Did you look at mind behaviors and and how to kick habits and stuff like that like how did you actually go about amalgamating what it is that you're going to put in a course and obviously you've chosen entrepreneurs and those that are willing already to go to that next level you're not trying to get people that are like shit kickers for lack of a better term you're trying to get people that are already trying to do something extraordinary yeah so how people did you put start, together that yeah it's a good for question. those kind of people People at the start could definitely benefit from this. I just find that they're less committed because they've still got some stuff they need to figure out first. Yeah, you need that's your why, why, right? Yeah, right. We help. We do that in the program. That's week number one. It's like we get that sorted because a lot of people need a new one. Old motivation is not going to get them there. But essentially was I created all these things, figured them out for myself, did them myself. They worked. Then I helped a whole bunch of other people do them and they started working for a certain period of time. Then I was like, this is like a couple of years. I did this for like two, three years, helping people, one-on-one coaching some very like – intensive one-on-one coaching and then i was like cool i need to put this into a program and then got a business coach and put it all into a program but um yeah so like the basic outline of the course is we spend like the first this is really like if anyone's listening to this in general this is like some real good stuff just to like get clear on because a lot of time people don't just do things you can understand all the theory in the world but if you're not taking action on it it's not gonna yeah well you gotta get in the court right it's not gonna come to anything but Dude, there's a lot of stuff that I researched on was mindset, the how uh, neurotransmitters work, how hormones work, and then old school philosophy and psychology. That's the main stuff. And I applied it to myself. A lot of relationship stuff too, um, just because, and how to communicate. So why the old school as opposed to the new school? I just resonated with it more, man. I learn better than stories. And I find that a lot of men do. Um, you should tell a story about something and everyone goes, oh, God, that makes sense. Um, and then you go, and then if you can apply biological stuff to it oh, that's even better because now we understand um both of it modern psychology doesn't really appeal to me that much it's so boring <laughs> yeah well i haven't read it yeah so it's, it's 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 like so boring but like i just me i find it personally um some people find it fantastic but for some reason people would say like they'd probably find philosophy boring because trying to read that is like impossible but i just like the challenge i'm like i've got no idea what this word means like, i sit there with a laptop um a pat like a, a pad of paper and the book and i'm just asking siri what words mean <laughs> and then they'll be like and this thing happened i'm like i don't even know what the hell this is i have to google it and then go for like a 
20 minute research of what this thing means so that like one thing can make sense. And then sometimes I'm like, that wasn't beneficial. It would waste so much time, there. but it was worth it in the long run. And the discipline and stuff that come with it is really good. So from like writing down your notes as a part of these books, you're like, all right, these are the excerpts that are resonating with me. You apply them to your life and you're like, all right, let me assist other people apply these things. Yeah. And then I'd visualize them. So I'd create a diagram on them and then I'd create like an exercise to do from them. Myself. And when you say like a diagram, is it based on like what kind of things are a good introduction? What things are like once I've kind of reached this milestone, these lessons worked for me. So this is one. This is the Maslow's hierarchy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because I've got like uh, I did one of my theories. I like upgraded Maslow's hierarchy, but I've got like a, this one here's a reminder because this is the hierarchy that I created, and then I've got like a I just call it the ego triangle mm-hmm. um, in here, which is another one. I'll explain that another time because that's like really in depth but um what i do is i visualize them in a certain way that we could see them and understand them and when you can see and understand them it's so much easier just for no you gotta explain it, it. <laughs> okay. i want to know all right you've got a symbol i love all symbols, right man. okay okay so for everyone listening just imagine a triangle uh, right now and on t- basically at the very top of the triangle is where you want to get to and there's like a line through it. If you can look at it, it's like the the sacred masculine symbol is what it is. So it's a triangle with a, just a horizontal line that goes through it, sort of near the top. And basically it's sort of helping people understand where ego fr- comes from. And I love this quote, it's a William Blake quote, and the quote is, the, the road of excess leads to the palace of wisdom. Yeah, huh. What does that mean? I'll repeat that again. The road of excess leads to the palace of wisdom. You never know what is what is enough until you know what is more than enough. Mm. For example, like you don't know that you're going to put on like weight eating or you don't know you're going to feel sick unless you eat like 10 Subway cookies. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> One Subway cookie is probably healthy. You know what I mean? If you've got a craving for something sweet, like it's probably healthy. 10 Subway cookies in a row, it's probably too much. But until you go a little bit further, you're not going to know it's more than enough. Also, you can take it in the opposite part, uh, way of things. Like being lazy. I'm going to spend three hours on social media today. Can't be bothered doing stuff. Until you go maybe like one, two days of just like doing nothing at your holidays and your weekend, just spend your whole time on your phone and just like playing video games or something. You're like, that was probably more than enough. Like I need to, I need to start doing some stuff because my house is messy and things are just like screwed around. Yeah, and you just get that feeling of just like, <laughs> what the hell is my life worth? Like yeah. I've done nothing. <laughs> yeah. That's like too much. But basically what happens is there's an, another line under the triangle, just like another horizontal line. And basically I talk about the shadow like and the unconscious and where mm. that comes from. It. Shadow self, yeah. Shadow self and the unconscious. And, and until you bring it into this triangle and make it more than enough, you never be aware of it. So at the very top of the triangle, I, I just say ego energy, which is like enthusiasm, which is what, what you want to get. And like they use, like in a Greek myth, they use enthusiasm, comes from the word enthusiasmos or something like that, enthusios. And basically it means to be possessed by a god. And they use it in terms of Greek deities, like Zeus, Athena, Apollo, um, Ares, all that stuff. When you go to the gym, bro, you want to show up as Ares, man. You want to be there ready for war. When you are got to be, you know, if you're making love to your missus or whatever it is or your partner, you want to show up as like Aphrodite, you know what I mean? And the people that can really lean into like all of the feelings and the emotions of whatever is needed by them is they gain what they call enthusiasm. Or someone that's just super hyper energetic. It's like you have the enthusiasm or the energy of the gods. It's like, wow, that's amazing. And I believe that when you go through the palace of wisdom, you know what is more than enough um, and you're not timid about things because it's like passive as well. One is like the, uh, let me go back, explain. You got the top, enthusiastic ego energy. On the bottom left-hand side of the triangle is your timid or passive side, which means sort of like you get to the stage, maybe you have the intention, you want to go to the gym, you want to get some muscles, but you're like, oh, I'm a bit scared. Like I don't want to go to the gym. It's going to be scary. There's going to be some massive people in there. Everyone's going to look at me, whatever it is. And it isn't until you go full-blown meathead and like injure yourself and people look at you like, what the hell, dude? You're doing a full meathead right now. You're like, maybe I should turn this down and be like humble and not so narcissistic because that's the right-head side of the triangle, too much ego narcissistic, that you can go, I'm going to pull this down and have a healthy relationship with this. Enthusiasm. And I believe for men in particular, it's really important to be aware of that because a lot of men just have to like push things too far with stuff sometimes they go way too far but if you're aware of this and you know like okay i'm intentionally pushing myself a little bit far here i'll figure out where the limit is and then i'll roll it back in and if you're aware of that then bro enthusiasm is just gonna come out and find you then on top of that this horizontal line here is your environment and your situation so depending on your certain environment and situation is going to depend a certain amount of 
you know, egotistical energy from you, depending what it is, whether you have to be the, the road of Essex leads to the palace of wisdom or you're happy just chilling at the moment. Does that make any sense? Yeah, no, that definitely makes sense. It's like you're cruising between the duality of like being passive and aggressive and then finding that middle road to achieve your goals and whatnot, but also with social dynamics of, you know, that as well. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's just dealing with the polarity of life by the sounds of it. So then you can be enthusiasm. Yeah, it will reach your full potential. So it's yeah. sort of like, you know, pushing your limits, finding your limits, then bring it back for everything in life, for literally everything that you do. Mm. And it isn't until you're aware of what you're unconsciously doing. Like some people that are working with stuff, they'll just be working like 10, 12 hour days every single day. And they'll go on a holiday and they'll throw up. Like, well, wh why? And they're like, it's just because they haven't had any time for stillness. Their body hasn't processed anything. Yeah, that's a big thing, isn't it? Like addressing your shadow self of yeah. like, you know, for example, like you'll get sick in a certain area and that's like actually your body telling you like you haven't tended to that. Like, for example, if you get sore throats all the time, it's probably because you're lacking integrity. So your voice, <laughs> your, your actual, your word is lacking integrity. Yes. So therefore you got to correct that and then you probably won't get sore throats all the time. Yeah, I really re resonate with this because there's a quote that I recently wrote and it says that um, without a shadow, there's no substance. This is true for purpose. And with... <sighs> Dude, he's a, he's a uh, great poet. He's yeah, a he's great. like I said this last time on, on the last uh, show because like with the drive of pursuit of um, a career or self, like it keeps coming up. And I feel like that's why when I was writing, that was the best way to describe that endeavor. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. And do you know where the shadow comes from? It's, it's you. Well, it's actually well, for men in particular, yeah. Carl Jung calls it, this is like where, yeah. where he gets it. He says it's called the anima. Yep. which is the feminine within the masculine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right? It's called the anima. In in girls, it's called the animus, which is the masculine within the feminine. And it sort of actually depends too if you're a masculine or feminine person because whichever one you are is the opposite's going to be. So for majority of men, it, it'll be called the um, anima. And that is like the feminine within yourself. And if you haven't integrated that properly, especially I was literally reading today um, with just some of the stuff that I research on, and it was talking about how... Joseph Campbell's book, Pathway to Bliss, and he was literally talking about how from the second as men we've been like put into schooling systems to like, and the religions, uh, the religions and beliefs and stuff that we've been aware of in the Western world is there's no feminine symbol. Like if you think about Christianity and stuff, there's no like big feminine symbol when in every other like religion, there's like it has the Mother Earth, yeah, there's yeah. Hera, the Zeus for whatever it is. Yeah. And for people, it shows up in a lot of different countries as like, men lack the feminine side or they don't accept it within themselves so many men out there have like a really great feminine energy mm -hmm. in terms of and feminine energy is just being able to create yep. being able to feel mm -hmm. being able to love mm -hmm. being able to find your purpose yep. being able to write stuff down like you probably yeah. wouldn't realize when you're writing stuff down mm -hmm. as like feminine energy is flowing bro and yeah. it feels amazing it's what charges us up the reason like we actually enjoy anything that we do otherwise you just become like a yeah like you've, just you've got it you've got a spot on spot on because <laughs> that that exactly is what I'm trying to uh, bring out because n not everyone can understand that. I don't know if it's like the different cultures that, you know, other cultures are very like the roles of male and female. There's an imbalance sometimes, you know, and that might stigmatize the idea of like men have to be vulnerable. Yeah, you know what I mean? exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not even, it's, it's like vulnerabilities, I, I believe is definitely one part and you're hundred percent correct, but there's so much, there's so much else there. Yeah. Like so much. And when you understand that your entire shadow side yeah. comes from the anima, yeah. blows your mind. So if you've got a positive relationship with like your mum, for example, symbolism, mum, mother, but most people, it's like our mum. If you have a really positive relationship with your mum, you're a little bit insensitive about things. Mm -hmm. Like a little bit, no, you're a little bit too sensitive. You're a little bit dependent on other people with things and you get a little bit more attached to stuff. If you've had a very negative relationship with your mum, this is generally Carl Jung stuff. If you've had a very negative relationship with your mum, you're going to show up as someone who is a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more touchy and a little bit more, like a little bit more oomph to them, a little bit more aggression, yeah. which is really funny. And you, and you listen to that and it's like, well, that's like your dark side and what you need to integrate. And when you do integrate it creatively is where you will find a lot of fulfillment. So for people who, let's say, for example, have a real bad a relationship with their mum they could find like creative energy through martial arts or something like that oh, yeah. other people who have had like a real positive relationship with their mum it could be through you know writing poetry creating music 
um, creating something digital art, like whatever it is, just as like main main things. Now I, I've had like both. I've had a really good and a bad relationship. With yeah, same. So, so Dude, I, go, I feel that. That's I wild. Go, I'll yeah. go. I'll go both. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. You know, you know what's crazy? Me myself, like I left my parents at the age of four. Whew. I haven't seen them since. Whew. I'm turning twenty four. So basically, I've I've endured and learned from my outside experiences. I've been an observer. Observer, yeah. I've got a really good question to ask you because I think about this a yeah, lot, especially yeah. for people who like haven't had that uh, experience um, of like parents for a long period of time because I talk about this a lot. You can see I'm quite passionate about it because mm. I work for this a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs. And like where was the symbols for you of like mother and father? Like where did you find that? Because some people it was like grandparents, other people it was like – uh, people that took them in or whatever it is, but for you, it could have been something completely different. Like yeah. where was the mother and father symbolism for you? Yep. You know, the crazy thing is um, for me, that symbolism came from a source that I, I couldn't understand because I felt like there was a voice within that was guiding me through different situations, you know, and I called it divine intervention. And the divine intervention is when God interferes in your affairs, you know, affairs of humans. And the funny thing is when I finally got to speak with my mother, she was like another version of me. But it sounds, it was like we were best friends for years. And she was like a better version. So that, that's that living force that's not known. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro, I know what you yeah, mean. Yeah. I was just reading today on some of Joseph Campbell's stuff and it was crazy. And he was talking about um, the difference between stereotypes and imprinting. And he used this example of a baby ch- chicken, like a baby chook. Like if you take that out, like literally just been hatched oh, yeah. and you get a hawk flying over its head they'll run around and look for safety mm. do you get a pigeon and have it flying over its head it'll chill mm. like it knows oh. the difference between yeah. like what's yeah, what like what's instincts what? yeah like yeah. full instincts but yeah. what like it's a little bit different because you've got the symbolism of the eagle which could be for some people a certain stereotype like it could be like oh that's gonna happen and for you like in that stage i, I, I believe that's sort of like an imprint like it's just a thing that will never change yeah, it's yeah. That's what I mean. The wow. divine intervention yeah. in your adversity. Yeah, it's crazy. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, it's a weird experience when you get like in touch with your creative side and in touch with God, and you find that like life flows through you, and it's just like you are delivered message. Like, have you ever had when meditating? It's like a download. It's like my whole program is based off that. Just download. <laughs> just getting in touch with Pretty the divine much. and downloading. Well, how I so I think like everyone has their own sort of way of being able to channel it. One of the things for me is talking to people because I make a lot of connections. Like even through here now, like Lynn, I've learned heaps from you, so thank you. Mm. Um, but a lot of t- I'll just sit there with the material that I'm reading because I've like been reading a lot of these hard books and researching them all the time. I'll read one book and they'll say something similar to the next one, and I go bang, bang, bang. Oh my gosh, this is the. The, the, the moment of channeling, I'm going to create this into a diagram and I'm going to call all my friends. I'm going to tell them, what do you think of this? And then they come around and be like, what do you think of this? Is this right? How does this apply to you? And I'll like help figure it out. And they're like, whoa. And I'm like, ah, oh, putting this in the program. And then we <laughs> put it in and then I test it with people and they're like, whoa. And we're all just like <laughs> hyped up and living our best lives. It's great. I love that. I yeah. love that. So what other things do you do inside of your program? Like how are you structuring the challenge for people? Yeah, well, structure out like the week. So we spend the first three weeks getting really clear on purpose. And figuring that, doing some real deep in internal work. And there's an exercise for anyone who's listening. I'd, like you, I'd love for you to do this and message yeah, me. I'm listening. <laughs> so this one, so is this a real good exercise? It's in week three of the course. I call it qu- quick trip to heaven, quick trip to hell. It's pretty intense. We've had some, some people in the course that have been like, well, I need like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I need like two weeks, I'll be back. I'm like, all right. Um, we had other people that have just been like, well, this is insane. Essentially, what you do is I got this out of um, one of Jordan Peterson's programs. Um, Jordan Peterson, he did a program for self-authoring. It took me six months to complete. Um, so for people who are like, oh, I'd love to do that. It's like, you got to be ready to give that a go. And I wanted what was out of that because he had studies and data on that that said like, you know, people who... Uh, completed the program had like 75 percent better grades in like university settings so i was like i want to be that elite so i did it took me ages but I did it. it was crazy and one of the things that he does is make you like sort of relive all of your memories and project your future and i was like well, i could summarize this for someone like a lot shorter so what i do is sort of break out um the quick trip to heaven is you figure out and quick trip to hell you do that first and then you go to heaven after <laughs> get the hard stuff out of the way <laughs> um you sort of summer up your life into little ep- epochs, whether it's two, three, five years of when like, you know, if you were at a job for five years, that'd be like an epoch, like a little epoch. Or if you were at a, whatever it was for two years, that'd be a little epoch, like forever you're at for when stuff was like consistent. So you break it up, majority of people, three to five years, 
And you just go back to like, when was something like that happened that affected you in a negative way that you still remember today? And you just go like, all right, three years back from today, all right, eight years back from today, all right, and you just keep going down. And then what you want to do is figure out a pattern of like why all of those like bad things kept happening. Like one of my clients was really easy. I remember at the top of, top of mind was he just kept feeling like he wasn't good enough. He'd enter a swimming competition and just couldn't get to the team. He tried to do work for his dad and his dad never acknowledged him. He kept trying to do like real good stuff with friendship groups and stuff and they only accepted him because he was good looking and he could get with girls. So he never felt like he was good enough for anything. So yeah, he didn't runs, feel like he belonged. Didn't feel like he belonged, man. There was no like contribution connection there. So, and he was a real feminine person. So understanding all those things, it was like, I man, was just weighing him down and it holds him back from reaching his full potential. So it wasn't until we dive real down and like all those things and figured out that pattern, we were like, oh my gosh, mm. this is like super fantastic. How is that affecting you now? He's like, oh my goodness, this is affecting me now for this, 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 and this. Like, yeah, cool. the I don't belong like narrative. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? And it's like, okay, so you want to say goodbye to that because you're at where you are now. Now, what are all the things that you need to do today, specifically today, to reach like your best goal, which we figure out in number one, like your purpose. What's, what's all things you just, you just need to do today? And it's so simple. People come in like, well, I need to do like my best work in the morning. I need to make sure that I, I eat really well. I need to make sure that I give love to everybody. I need to make sure I go to bed on time. I need to make sure that I just- Big like, things. Yeah, literally, right? Huge things. But they're so when simple. When you do that all the time, oh, Bulletproof. change your life. <laughs> yeah. Change your life. Change your life. And then what we do is we get people to like figure out what that routine is. And then, okay, what does your life look like in three to five years now if you keep that up? They're like, oh, it's pretty bloody good, eh? And they're like, all right. Okay, what does it look like in 10 years? Yeah, they have like a possibility that they've created- 15, 20, 25, we go way up to like 35 years. What does your life look like in 35 years now if, if you keep this consistent? And they're like, what? <laughs> like, this is so good. I'm like, cool, now do that in 10 years. Yeah. Like, well, well, just probably. turbocharge it. Yeah, well, you've, you know what it is now. All it is is you just got to make sure that you do it and it can happen a lot, a lot quickly. Like there's people that I work with, like the first guy that I talked about, his name is Robbie. He was a legend. And like he had these three-year goals of like starting his own con construction company and having a certain amount of income coming in and being like time-free and stuff, right? It's a three-year goal. We did it in six months. Cool. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> that's wild. Yeah. That's Literally. Wild. He's killing it. <laughs> I love it. So I've... Why I resonate with you so much and why I'm loving having you on is because I have done so much personal development myself through a company called Landmark and like yep, heaps. Yep. Like I got introduced to that when I was like 17. I was like, yeah, I really want to do it. Wasn't old enough because, you know, none of my parents had done it. Was a stoner for like my 18, at 18, whole year, just smoked weed every day. Just didn't do much. Just Smoke uni, cruise through. <laughs> Pardon? Smoke weed every day. Oh, legit. <laughs> just didn't do heaps. And then when I hit 19, I was like, something's got to give. I need a transformation. I want to change. And then this course got reintroduced in my life. Been like, hey, you want to do this? And I'm like, yes, I'm ready for it. Did it. Completely rocked the whole foundation of my life. Realized that I was just holding resentment towards my mom, my dad, my grandparents, my friends. Like, fucking everybody, dude. And I get to let all that go. And I was just like born a new human, you know, born a new human from being like this stoner personality. Like, uh, da, da, da. like I was still friendly. Like I, I still had a lot of friends. But what I realized is that I never actually let people in. Like I was talking to this girl on campus. It was such a clear as day. And she goes, oh, my God, Hamish, I didn't even know you were spiritual. Meanwhile, like this, I'd been doing like Kundalini yoga for six months and watching like conspiracy videos on YouTube all the time and like – deep diving into all that world and like chakras, meditation, like all of it. Loved it. I went to like kinesiology at the age of like 15, 16, had all my chakras aligned, you know, like had the conversations of, uh, that's where I first got introduced to proper personal development. She was able to have these conversations where she would like refer to clients without telling me who the clients are. That would be like these moral lessons for the exact stuff I was dealing with, but to the point where she was like pretty well psychic. The first time I went there, she guessed the exact experience that was like the biggest thing in my world guessed it on the first time. Like, hey, when you were this old, this happened with this person. And I'm like, oh. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, All right, I trust you. You know what I mean? And that was such a big thing for me. It was like trust. Um, and just through this personal development journey, like these ideas of like personal responsibility, but on that deeper level of getting to like what's the actual conversation and the pattern that's going on and the story that you've made that you're projecting out to that future in which you're living into because it's like the the idea of the 
the um, like what do you think creates who you are today? Your choices. Yeah, your choices. So like, you know, the, the school you went to, the parents you had, the choice you made in terms of like from, because oh, obviously yeah. for most of your year, you didn't really have heaps of choice, right? Environment situation. You were kind of told yeah. what to do yeah. and guided and you, you're doing that. Um, so, you know, those things like your school, your education, the content you consumed, all that kind of stuff. And what's all that have in common? It's your past, right? But the radical idea is that it's not your past that's creating who you are today. And if it's not your past that's creating who you are today, who, what is it? Now. Is it? No. Oh, it's close. It is the past. It, well, it's the future that is creating you today. But why it looks like the past is because all the past decisions you've made that you are put out into your future. Oh, so you're emotionally at, attached. And that might sound wild, but a, a great example was like, first time you got broken up, what did you decide? Or like, or like ended a relationship, like first love, you were heartbroken. What do you decide about relationships? Oh, yeah, majority of people, I'm never having a relationship again. Yeah, I'm not having a relationship yeah, again. That's it, yeah, actually, yeah. Right? You're like, hey, that's not know. stored in your past. Oh, yeah. That's stored in your future. Mm. So you're living into that decision in which you've made. So yeah, choices, right? That's what you, you said, which is, but it's the context of the, it's the future, the choices that you're living into. Oh, yep. But these things become subconscious and they become in your shadow self, right? So you have no idea they're actually going on. And you've downloaded these programs which you're living, but you have no idea you're living them. You're like, why the fuck my life turned out like this? Yeah. And it's not until you do that gruesome, not always gruesome, but that gruesome introspection and having like a guide like you. You know, there's obviously, this is becoming a bigger thing in our world. I think since the 60s and 70s is when all these personal development coaches and programs really started and like the bedrock of that conversation being a part of the western culture began from like the kind of tear away from religion being that um and obviously some people going into wokeism and getting like indoctrinated by some wild shit but like <laughs> <laughs> but this is some like you know without fables and whatnot doing it i think and yeah it's wild, man. How'd it's you, good how stuff. How did you feel when you started getting on the path? Oh, man. With the emotions. All my friends wanted to not be friends <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, dude, you got to do it. Oh, my God. Blah, blah, blah. I was like a broken record, man. I was like, there's this whole other possibility of how you can live life. Like, you got to get on board. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I almost lost all my friends. And so I got this, a level of isolation, which was nothing new to me because, like, school, some shit happened, lost my old friendship group, and was just in solid solitary confinement of my life which i used to just deep dive into the history of hip-hop which was a phenomenal journey like literally the hot the the best albums of hip-hop i went all the way back to the 70s you know how did this shit start all the way to now now back then was what 2011 so like that whole chunk of history i just knew intimately the road of excess leads to the palace of wisdom that's yes. it and i loved it because i'd learned from it you know like there's so many guides and teachers in that but obviously I upgraded that. You went to personal development and whatnot because it's, you know, it's a better package. Like great it's about you. Make, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Great decision to make. Like knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. And I think there's just so many different accessible ways to get it these days. But how to communicate it is a whole nother thing. Definitely. Time. I've, I've done thing. leadership programs where my job would be to like open people up that were just being introduced to this world to creating their possibility of an area of their life and what that could look like and actually painting that picture so clear that they've created it and they can see it clear as day, which is just a phenomenal journey. So take us through, like, what is it like for you creating these, like, possibilities of people with people? Yeah, what is it like for you? Like, how do you go about doing that? Because I know exactly how I go about doing that because <laughs> I've been trained by, like, just a, pro a company. Well, give me like your example, and then I should be able to like talk on talk on. So the program in which I do is, which is like you know, uh, you'd write down what it is your like an area of your life that's not working or not working as well as you'd like it to. So you choose an area, and you'd start with writing what's working, what's not working. Your broad terms, you know, your finance, your family, this relationship with this person, this, and you choose. You know, you'd go through for like five minutes, and you choose that, and then you are what's working or not working as well as you'd like it to. Then you choose that and then you look at your your probable most certain future. So you, what are you already doing 
already having as a result and already being and already being it was like the 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 main thing you'd focus on because it's like in the it the idea is that it's not what you're doing and having that is creating a result it's who you're being that is the source of your creation so if you're you know it's like if you're working let's say at hungry jacks or you're working at a burger joint and you're being all stroppy and you're doing the job but then you're not having a promotion or you're not you're not having a good day or da 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 but if you're being like proactive happy da 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 those like more positive traits those more powerful traits well it's like well you having promotion you're having like things are happening right yeah but your actions may be the exact same <laughs> I've got four modules which could work really well on this. I'll just get you to pick one. So one's called King Warrior Magician Lover. You might be aware of it. I can talk about that. Another one I've got is called Purpose, Beauty and Danger. Sorry, three. I'll do three. And then the other one's called, it's called uh, The Modern Leader's Hierarchy. Let's go to the last one. Last one, Modern Leader's Hierarchy. So essentially I like upgraded a hierarchy from Maslow's and made it more modern because if you look at Maslow's physiological health needs, they say roof over your head, access to food, all those things. Like, who doesn't have a roof over the head and access to stuff in like Western culture? Like it's the yeah, majority. It's pretty damn rare. Yeah, it's very low of the majority of people. But people not eating properly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's right. It's a big one. It's a huge it's one. It's a big one. That's week four of the course. <laughs> um, and so what I did was I just like upgraded the whole thing to what would be best for I thought now. And I've tested it with probably like close to 100 people now. And everyone's like, yep. So it's like that. addressing the modern day necessities. Yeah, I'll run you through it if you don't mind. Yeah, okay, cool. So cool. the first like foundation on the on the pyramid is physiological um, health needs, is what I call it, health specifically, meaning your body and your mind together. I believe the body and mind is one. If you've got a very optimized mindset, it's a lot easier for you to make decisions for your body. If you've got a very healthy body, it's a lot easier to optimize your mindset and have a good mindset of things. Focus on that first in terms of priorities. Like you want a priority um, structure. This is the first thing to prioritize. Prioritize that first. Once you do those things, correct me if I'm not, would, but if you're starting to have a better mind and a better body, would it be easier for you to like yourself? Yes. Yeah. So the next step is self-love and confidence. So when you start doing these things consistently, you have a routine or something, you start sorting them out. You're going to start to feel confident. You're going to start to accept and really like yourself more. When you really like yourself more, it's a lot easier to be in the position and you've got a body and mind to deal with stress. When it comes in for your mind and your body, it's going to affect your parasympathetic state, nervous system, or it's going to affect your sympathetic nervous system. And correct me if I'm wrong, but do you think if you like yourself, it's going to be a lot easier for you and, you, and you're fit and your mind's better. It's going to be easier for you to take on stress and learn the tools and spend the time of figuring out the tools so that you can deal with it as best as possible. Yes. Yes. So you figure that out. You start learning the tools for stress and figuring them out. Understand how it works and how can I deal with this? Because in two when you say stress, you mean <coughs> situations that you're put in that are stressing you out. So yeah. like a work situation. Like, oh, what are the tools I need to actually work through that? What is this? I'm feeling stressed right now. I'm sitting in traffic or I'm going to the gym. It's the same thing. Your, your brain doesn't know the difference between if you're sitting in traffic or if you're getting chased by a bear or if your boss is like, yo, you're late. Like it doesn't know the difference. All, it, all the thing in your brain just goes as stress. It doesn't know the difference. Boom, it'll just pick up. So there's tools that you can use to deal with that. An easy one is like meditation. Some are learning breath, some is learning emotional control. Um, but you can do all these different things and eating and making sure that there's different ways to eat as well to make sure that your nervous system calms down. It's, it's crazy, all this stuff. But to learn those tools, you're in a position now to learn them, deal with stress as best as possible, which then leads on to the next step, which I believe is the most important, and that is relationships. Do you think if your body and your mind um, was started to get optimized, your started to really like yourself and get confident. You started to learn how to deal with stress, that you're now in the perfect position to not only just have relationships, but optimize your relationships. Employees, business partners, people in your network, friendships, or intimate relationships. You got the tools, right? Yes. So you can do it. Yeah, yes. you can deal with stress. You can start to have those tough conversations that you need to have. You can have the tough conversations. And I think it's the most important. Everyone's a mirror reflection of you and they can help you get to wherever you need to be. Like, you know, every, I believe everything comes down to a conversation. You want a promotion? Conversation. You know, um, Your mic's not on. Sorry. Yeah, so when you said that, it reminded me of my own journey. Because <laughs> relationships actually were the key because in the book it says um, the guiding star was family and relationships of my journey. So I can't really remember the quote, but it was like that. It was like, um, I said, love is what binds us, but can blind us, but keeps us fighting for equality, togetherness. 
my fist is the size of my heart for a reason. And then it's like, um, my, I felt, and then my guiding star was my fa- was family, relationships, mothers, sons, old friends, girlfriends. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah. So when you say, when you said that theory, it's like, that's where I found my calling and um, understanding of self. Damn, bro. You got an Instagram page with all these quotes. <laughs> There's yeah, more yeah. to come on this theory, but oh my God. Well, he's got a book. I need Journal to, of a Refugee. Yeah, I need to get this. Go and check yeah. it. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll link in after. Yeah, yeah please do. Yeah. yeah. You have a very pragmatic approach, I've noticed. Like it's very action oriented. Oh yeah, dude. Which is great. Because oh, yeah. a lot of my experience of personal development, it's a lot more mind. Oh, we are all And action. unless you have like... <laughs> We got to do very strategy. Oh yeah, man. It's we, good. We, we hold each other like one of the most beautiful things about like the group coaching, the programs we got is like the people in the groups because we make sure like it's, if the people just want to learn stuff and just go, Oh, learn about myself. Like the program's not for you. Like you're going to be doing shit and you have to do it and we're going to make you do it. Like, and you're held accountable to do it. And so what does that look it? like? I'll, I'll get to that okay. after I finish the hierarchy. I've got to finish it. Right, so at go. relationships, there's two more to go. Once you've sorted out your relationships, it's a, well, there's three more steps. Then it's at the point where you get to ask yourself the question, what is the finance that I need to live my most desired life? Start playing that. You got all the tools. You got the mindset, the body, you got the confidence, you can deal with stress and you're good in relationships. What's the finance you need? That means for you to figure out what's your most desired life look like specifically and what's it going to cost. And then if it's lots of money, because I work with a lot of people that are like, I've got that. I just need the next two steps. I'll tell you, but other people it's like, oh man, there's heaps more that I need to make. Well, it's like, Go out and make it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You understand all the stuff. This is the step after finance is what hierarchy are you climbing in terms of your career? Have you got a business? Are you climbing that? Are you podcasting? Are you climbing that? Are you in a sport? Are you climbing that? Are you working in a job? What's the hierarchy there? Where can you get that's the highest? And if you can't, move across so you can go up somewhere else because you need to be climbing some sort of hierarchy. Any time of stagnation is going to be in, um, like make – backwards momentum sort of Mm. like a pond if you have a pond and the river's not like and you got ponds that aren't flowing and it's just still there what builds up algae and shit and you got to move it out the way to get the water flowing again yeah you either contract or expand they ain't gonna stay the same and then the last step is impact and that is the question is who do you want to serve that's it who do you specifically want to serve that's going to fill your cup up? Mine is specifically entre- entrepreneurs and business owners who just are stuck and they want to absolutely start crushing it and like real crush it and take action on that. Because when they do, and I've had it like so much with the testimonials and all the stuff that we go through work, they're like, this is the best. And they're just poof, 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 balance all areas, just firing. It's amazing to see it. And sometimes it's like we're just pulling the steps back a little bit and then it's like, oh, everything's going crazy now. It's nuts. Anyway, so it's figuring out specifically who do you best want to serve? And I'd like to ask you the question, man. Hamish, who is the people you most want to serve? For some, just examples, some people it's family, some people it's friends, some people it's the environment, some people it's like animals, some people it's like specific groups of people, children, or like people in swimmers, like whatever it is. It really depends on which project. For me, Ooh. it really depends on which project because I have like several huge life goal projects. Which are most favorite at the moment? What's uh, at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is definitely my most favorite at the moment. The podcast. Okay. So who are you serving? I am serving people that want to learn. Just yeah. Learners. Essentially learners that want to make their lives better. Where are they? Where are they on the internet? (laughs) (laughs) Whereabouts geographically? Oh, geographically. Well, I mean, we'll start with Australia, but then we'll expand out to like other English speaking countries. What's what's the gender demographics roughly? I'd say mostly men. So you want to serve... Men who are eager to you know really learn about themselves, am I guessing, or learn? Yeah, well, also, I like the idea of people creating an awesome world and creating their own version of utopia. Like, I like the idea of freedom, not in like a gun toting, you know, or even I, I don't mind toting guns, they're fine, <laughs> but you know, in a way that's like the idea of freedom is it allows you to explore and go for your version of utopia as long as it doesn't interact with somebody else's life. So you're serving Australian men who want freedom through creating their own worlds. Yes. How powerful is that, bro? It's so powerful. You can just put that up everywhere. Hey, everyone, you want to be free? You want to create your own world? Listen to this damn podcast. What's your voyage, baby? Legit. Mm, This is an experience of us like going through, having conversations with those that are making a difference in the world and trying to figure out how they're actually doing what they're doing. And I'd just like to put out there as well, you're working a job. You're doing all these other things. You're oh, sorting yeah. all this stuff out. 
You've got so much going on, man. I hate the word busy, but there's a lot going on. It's good. And you're doing this because you love it, dude. Yeah. You can you have to, you have to correct me if I'm wrong, but those hierarchy, those steps that I all like organized, like for you, you'd be like, I've thought about like pretty much all of those. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, dude. To get to this position where you're doing something that you love, you got to sort all those things out. Because well, my excuse is the stronger the foundation, the easier it is to get to the top. Facts. Fact. And figuring out the why, I had this coach at one point there. She was like, I want to coach you because like all the stuff I was doing didn't have much strategy towards it. And I was like 21 and I was like, I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> at that, you know, it's like I knew what I wanted to do, but like I wasn't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and why are you doing it, man? Yeah, right. And, um, and then she started coaching me, but I just couldn't keep up. And I, what I've realized is like I had to like, figure out my why because she asked me the why thing and i just couldn't figure it out dude it's so funny i was just sitting this. there with it for fucking years the first week i like I haven't shared this before because i like to get people so we share your, your vision and your mission and your purpose like in the first week i tell people that but if you haven't heard about the why exercise i remember listening to something and i was talking about it because i did it for myself i can't remember what podcast i listened to and i'm like i'm gonna sit down and do this and they're like majority of people i heard them talking about it was they get a lot of people get paid to do this for a job it's how people find their whys and you got to ask why Seven times. You say, why is this important to me? And then you'd be like, okay. Then you'd answer that question. And then you'd say, why is that important to me? To the answer for that question. And then figure it out. And most people get caught in a loop of just the same old stuff. And it isn't until you break away from that loop and really understand that it's for something else or someone else is why you're even doing anything, which is really important. Finding who who you want to serve. And then, so what I did was I recreated it and sort of figured out all the theory and all the stuff to make sense, to motivate people enough to attack it full on and how to specifically set it up to do it. Cause I've done it so many times. I have, I have this document of collected purposes that I have and it is wild, man. Every time I read it out, I'm like, I get so emotional because there's so many purposes of people that found their wise, but if we do it 10 times and it's so frustrating, we get all the way down. Majority of the time it's getting to like eight or nine is usually roughly where it, where it's at. And then the 10 is like a recap of things. And then I get really clear and specific on the actual words so we can summarize it into like a 10 word sentence. So what's your why? My why is to inspire young ambitious men by consistently overcoming myself. Nice. That's my one. Yeah, I love it. It used to be just consistently, over, over, um, consistently overcoming myself, but I found who I want to serve, mm. which is like young ambitious men. I've got a fun quote. Cool, hit me. Ready? So this one is says, this is from Pablo Picasso. Yeah. So what a guy. <laughs> what a guy. Yeah. The meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. Ah, I love it. I love it. And I, 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 yeah, I came across it and I was like, this is probably coming towards my own why as well. Yeah. There's one, like, I will quote that I resonate with a lot that comes in, like, my, dude, thank you for saying that. Yeah. I actually love it. Yeah. Please send it to me afterwards because <laughs> gotcha. I want to use that one. Yeah. Um, make sure I remember it because we're getting tired right now. Mm. But a quote that I use a lot for, like, my, uh, in my course, another Frederick Nietzsche quote is, he yep. who cannot command himself must obey. Facts. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Facts. <laughs> Discipline yeah. breeds you choosing your life. Yeah, that, that, if you don't have discipline, you can't choose your life. Somebody else is going to choose it. Yeah, dude. Yeah, like yeah, the reality would choose it. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, yeah, facts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And life's going to choose. Some dudes going to be like, oh, this person doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah, do my thing. Yeah, you know, you're going to work at a job. Then you're unconscious for ages, and then you, this, you, your shadow expresses itself in a negative way, yeah. and then you come up for the term that is called in quotation marks possessed and i love that term because carl jung uses it yeah. and it's sort of like you know when you go through a day and you're reactive or you're just a bit shit mm. and um you get to the end of the day and you're like i can't believe all those things that i did or said or what what the hell was i thinking that's not me mm. i'm not like that you're possessed bro it's the opposite of enthusiasm what i was talking about with the gods possessing oh, yeah. you it's like you're legit possessed by your dark side right now mm. and if you're not aware of it or you can't catch it it's like so you can't control your actions that's a big thing right catching it you got to catch that. That's the biggest thing is you got to, you got to recognize what your dark side is and be able to catch it. Cause once it, it's like those things, those programs, if you don't know the programs, you can't catch them. Once you realize you know the program, you catch it and you got, that ain't me. That's just some fucking seven year old being upset talking right there. Dude, I believe one of the best ceremonies for this is to get into a relationship because your partner yeah. will call you out all time. Every time that you're not being the best version of yourself, they will sniff it out. They will tell you. They'll react to you because everyone's just a mirror of you. And I, like, I use this like um, 
I remember thinking about this. I was like, in terms of my own masculine maturity, I need to get good at a relationship. So with any girl that I get with, like I get into a relationship to, I got to fully commit. So many dudes that I speak to cannot fully commit they can't right. That's wholeheartedly like. <laughs> yeah. wholeheartedly they cannot commit yeah. and it's like yes. you'll never even learn to be a good partner yeah. unless you can fully commit yeah. and it took me however many goes to completely understand that and i'm in a relationship now it's like the best relationship in my life and it's like i catch that shit like so quickly mm. sometimes at the point where she's just like yeah i'm not used to this right now i, I don't know how to communicate <laughs> like, yeah, you have to accept really growth good. you have to accept growth within yourself and your other in your partner yeah for and sure and yeah it's the best personal development thing but, ever if you want to stare at yourself in the eyes but if you're not the best version of yourself yeah. you haven't sorted yourself out you can't command yourself and you're just walking around obeying all the time yeah um and then you get into a relationship and then you're trying to be the best version of yourself and sh- and like your partner's pointing at you you're going to be like Flip yeah. the bird back. You mean like, yeah. get fucked? No way. It'd be opposites. Yeah, literally. And then that's going to keep making you more unconscious and then pushing away, withdrawing, not being able to accept, receive, give oh. love. What does it mean to fully commit into a relationship? Well, it's just 100% commitment's a breeze and 99% commitment's a bitch, bro. Yeah, yeah, I get that. But, but what does it actually mean in reality for you? That's a really good What question. does it look like to actually fully commit? Well... That's a really good question. What's the right way of commitment? Yeah. Well, I'd say it would like like the most easiest logical terms that like I think of would just be like I, I think presence and trust. It. Yeah, that's right. I'd say presence and trust. So being present with your partner. Yeah, and trust. Because and then trusting them in terms of And proving your trust. Communication. Yeah. It's just trust in terms of, you know, because everyone's got like fears, especially with relationships and stuff growing up as kids of like, oh, either being cheated on or being left. So or like, trusting monogamy. Yeah, trust in monogamy for sure. And then trust that, you know, if like if with certain timelines, if someone's like, you know, I want to have a baby right now or someone's like, I don't want kids or if someone's like, oh, I'm going to move, you know, to another country in like a year, like whether you're coming or not. It's like, uh, you know, like, well, what am I going to do? Because you start getting attached to future timelines. And if you're mm. not aware of that and you haven't communicated those with your partner, when the things come up and you can't allow each other to express yourselves and it's going to be like real difficult. Some yeah, people so can like do with long Really open communication. Yeah, some people can't. And then you can like, it's commit. And as well as knowing that the other person, that's what I mean with trust is so important. It's knowing that the other person is going to be committed to the cause. So you both have a goal of being together, but you both have certain dreams, certain goals and stuff. It's like, cool. How can we combine them and compromise without having anything like, yeah, so you don't feel like a loser. Up. So you don't feel yeah. like a loser. But it's also just understanding, you know, where you go so you feel safe. Majority of times there's like an argument in any like um, uh, relationship. It's frustration that you can't communicate what you're feeling. End of. It's never frust- It's not so much frustration to the other person. You'll think it is, but it's because you just don't know how to communicate to that other person out of a fear of not being safe for whatever reason it is. Because you're vulnerable and you're attached, you're gonna get really comfortable. Men gotta get real comfortable with vulnerability. You know, I said beforehand, men aren't as in touch with their feminine energy, and they should. They should really brace that as much as possible. Yeah. If they're not, and they don't know how to get like vulnerable, and they don't understand that in vulnerability is power, then any time some sort of tiff comes up, they're just gonna withdraw or try to back away, and then she's end up gonna be like. This, like, this reminds me of the whole dark side and light side balance balancing of um, self. Mm. You know, yeah. That's exactly it. And you can learn that in the relationship. Yeah. And yeah, so what I say was it trust and what's the other one I said? So trust, the open presence. communication, being present. Yeah. yeah, it's literally being present, man. So when but when you say trust, is it because you were kind of defining open communication as, you know, being clear with each other of what our intentions are about life. You yeah. know, whether it be, hey, these are my career paths or this is how I want to be treated or those kind of things. So in terms of the trust element of that, okay, yeah. What does integrity. what does that look like? Integrity. So that so you, trusting someone's word. Yeah. That they they are, they're being their word. They, yeah, they have to. Because if let's say, for example, you created all these plans and then like your partner was like, Oh yeah, we should do this or I book this in or did this and they just start doing completely different stuff. And you'd be like, Well, how the hell am I gonna trust them for all the other stuff that we've just planned out and stuff? I can't trust this person. They keep saying stuff. They're not doing and following through what they're going to say. Some things are always going to mess up because they're human, but like yeah, in yeah. general, all the uh-huh. big things. And if they can't do it, it's like, what does restoration of integrity look like to you? Oh man, that's a, that's a big one. <laughs> restoration of integrity, yeah, man. I, I don't of think like should, even those little things. I don't think it should almost be like a thing. I think you should, you know, get to the point where you're so integral within yourself that any time that there is a, a mess up that you have, it's just immediate forgiveness. Yeah. But do you, you obviously have to address it, right? 
Yeah, well, you talk about it. But what is that? A, do you have like a formula of like how you go about addressing lacks of integrity? Mm. See, that's really difficult in my way because I value integrity so much, like so much. But if like you're <laughs> like, hey, I'm going to be late to this appointment. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's apologies, bro. If I'm late yeah. to the point, whatever, it's just, you know, it's on me. I just have to apologize. It's, it. it's about being your word and accountability, you yeah, would say. It is. Yeah. Mm, Sorry. That's right. literally, it's it. It's, it's apologizing, but understanding because like the other partner will be grumpy at you if it's. Let me know what you think of this. So I've learned this method of oh, I'm excited. restoration of integrity and it's a three part. So it's acknowledging what the broken agreement was. And like the main thing to keep in mind with integrity is that it's both insignificant and the most important thing ever. It's like butter. So when you talk about it, it's like butter. You know, you go to the store, very insignificant which butter you choose, but it's very important for your meals, very important for your health. So you got to choose the right butter. But there's like an air of like, oh, yeah, you know, like insignificance in a powerful way. So acknowledging what the broken agreement is, acknowledging the impact of the broken agreement on the other party, on yourself. So acknowledging the impact. And then uh, creating a new commitment. You know, or putting in place, this is what I'm going to do so that doesn't happen again. So, for example, if I'm late to an appointment, it says, hey, I'm late by like a half an hour to this appointment. Obviously, I've wasted your time. You know, you could have been doing other things and now you don't trust that I'm going to be there on time. So, in the future, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have this in my calendar because what happened is it's not in my calendar. So, I'm going to have it in my calendar and I'm going to make sure I have a 30-minute reminder that I'll be there again. Yeah, that's a real good way. In relationships, I'd add another one onto that because that's super masculine. Mm. And I took it in terms of like, I just call it speaking feminine, is uh, you want to label the emotion as well. Especially yeah. for if you're having like, if you're a male and your partner is female. But that'd be part of the impact as on the other person, right? Yeah, but you have to spe- specifically label the emotion. Yeah. So as in like, hey, um, because you could acknowledge it. She may never ever hear it. Because you didn't speak feelings. Because you didn't get her. You didn't. And that, you weren't listening. Yeah. In quotations. You didn't hear in quotations. You weren't understanding. Yes. So you have to label. Uh, firstly, you acknowledge whatever it is. Because I say this a lot of time. I, I have like a formula. It's very similar to yours. Very similar. And it comes out of nonviolent communication. The book. It's just I call it the ACE format. A C E. I got to have this is <laughs> a nonviolent direct action program. Ooh, that's cool. I love that. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and it's acknowledging same thing as you did. Yeah. And then it's um. A, C, uh, clarifying um, what you did. And then E is labeling the, the emotion. Um, and specifically, and then decision is what are we doing from here. Mm. And then labeling the emotion in there is um, extremely important because then they help understand it. So, okay, so you're feeling, I've broken your um, trust, whatever it is, integrity. The emotion you're feeling right now is betrayed. Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling frustrated? If you're angry, like what's the emotion there? Oh, I'm feeling so frustrated about this. Be quiet. <laughs> Let them. People when they talk feelings and they talk their feelings, and then explain the rest of the stuff. So I hundred percent agree. Yeah, what you're saying. It's man. powerful, man. It's it is, man. It's so different to hey, I'm sorry. Yeah, and then nothing gets addressed. Yeah, and if you just say hey, I'm sorry, they're like you didn't mean that. Yeah, <laughs> and and, I, I, and in part of that acknowledging, you know, what the impact on someone else is. Obviously, if they're a bigger deal, like for example, my friend he cheated on his girlfriend this one time. I called him. I was like, oh, bro. This, oh ain't this ain't it. <laughs> this ain't we it. We need to call your chick now. <laughs> <laughs> we need to call it, you know gone. what I mean? You, inte- you just lack integrity. Mm. I was like, don't feel morally bad about it. Like this ain't this ain't that. Are you still committed to your missus? He said, yeah. yeah. I was like, well, you have you integrity to restore. Up. Yeah, you're in a re- you're in a relationship. You have a commitment to you know monogamy. Yeah, hundred percent. And we did those steps, and he ended up having that relationship for another two years. It was right. wild. But Check the beautiful that. part of of restoring integrity especially with those bigger things because sometimes you can kind of just get you know oh this is the impact on you and it'll be cool because that you would acknowledge your impact but a big thing with a big thing is asking what is the impact of this on you oh bro right yeah, yeah, and yeah. like allowing someone and giving them the space and, and listening to actually like soak that in and acknowledge it and be with it as like a committed listener so the next step presence yeah presence bam back to presence that's a good presence. place. That is. Yeah. <laughs> Creating present. that up is, yeah, so so important. And I think um, a lot of dudes as well, men in particular, um, like I love John Gray. He talks about this a lot. And he was just like, you know, he used the example of his wife. And she got like so a, well researched. A, right? a nail in a finger. And he uses examples like she got a nail in a finger. And she was like, 
went up to him, oh my God, I've got this nail in my finger. And he was like, well, pull it out. She's like, no, you're not hearing me. I've got this nail in my finger. It's making me do this, feeling sad about it. And he's like, pull it out. <laughs> she was like, no, but I got to do this. And she just kept the nail in her finger because she needed to talk about how she was feeling about it before he pulled it out because he just went straight to solution. Yeah, which is such a dude thing to do. Such a dude I thing had to, to learn do. that like, in my teenage years. <laughs> I was so like, slush, slush, slush. Yeah. She's like, you never listen to me. Like, <laughs> like, oh my God, before. I'm trying to solve your problems because yeah. I care about you. Which is presence. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's where the presence come in and you're talking about. And, but men find it really difficult to take that blame because all we want to do is make our partners happy. Like that is, if we get home, we do them whatever, we do something for them and they're, they're happy, Dude, your whole day has changed. You're like, oh, yes, I am a stud. I am the hero. My I'm ladies, that guy. I am that guy. My lady's happy, man. Yes. But if you're in the position where she's not happy and she needs to tell you, same as to pull the nail out, she just needs to tell you about how she's feeling and she needs to tell you because you're the only one around. It's like she's going to really quickly call someone. So you have to take the blame and we're real bad at taking that. That's like negative magician energy. When they'll come in and like, we'll just try to take that blame and instead we push it off and no, 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 no. And then we like give it back and I still get guilty of this doing it myself but like working on it like so hard. And yeah, it comes in and then if you can go, okay, tell me more. How did I do that? How was I responsible? What that, whatever that was, let them talk through about it the whole yeah. time and listen intently and clarify that and then go, okay, as a guy, I find this is a real good technique. It's like, I just need a couple minutes and let me... um. Like think about it, then I'll get back to you yeah, on exactly what I need to say. Like prior to side exercise. Yeah, it is. It's full on. Mm. Um, but the thing is what I think is really important in there as a guy is if you're listening to that stuff and you're taking the blame and you're not sorry, and you take that second to go, let me think about this. Like before I say anything, like thank you for saying all that. I was present, asked you all the questions. You got it all out. Then you're going to ask yourself like, are you actually sorry or not? Because if you come, if you're not sorry and you say you're sorry, you're going to feel defeated mm. and you're like not going to respect yourself. It's make you, that's not being integral to you. Yeah, well, I think there's there's a thing, right? You can acknowledge the impact that your actions have on someone else. Oh yeah, but it doesn't mean you have to say like I would change that. But you can acknowledge 100%. the impact, and <laughs> you can say whatever it is. Sometimes you can say, "Look, I understand how you feel. I'm sorry you feel that way, but I'm not sorry about the situation." I yeah, change. right. And that, that's <laughs> a big thing, especially yeah. in work scenarios. I think that you know, outside Ooh, yeah. of relationship, that's a huge thing. In work yeah, scenarios, like, hey, I'm not sorry I made this decision making process, but like, I can see you're upset about it, and like, <laughs> I'm sorry you feel that way, but like, I do think that at the time I made the right decision. You're a genius, right? It's like <laughs> I feel like that applies to work heavy, dude. Yeah, you know, especially with so many egos about people trying to be like, I know the best way to do shit. And you're like, you know, well, <laughs> I was the one doing it, so I did it this way. <laughs> yeah, that's when they go on this little scale, they go on too much on the narcissistic side of things. Oh, dude, uh, it's wild. Some corporate places, you know. Yeah. It's crazy. People get caught up in the culture. It's very interesting. Mm. Yeah, and then you were even it. saying, like, you know, being a part of a of a workplace, you notice everybody's depressed. Dude, it was crazy. Oh, well, just because I worked in government, so... A lot of people went, have been, people worked, it's so crazy thing right yeah. now. People been at that company for like 35 years, bro. Oh, there you go. I was like, holy. There's no so, hierarchy that they can climb there. There's nothing, man. They're just stuck in their position, but they're ha like, they're not happy with it. You can see it. <laughs> they're, say? they're happy. No, they're, they're not. They're living, they're living <laughs> yeah, in a state of it's, dissatisfaction, man. And yeah, it suck. Yeah. I, feel yeah. so, I want to motivate them yeah, so I bad. Yeah. And I mean, look, that's obviously, that's your mission, right? But you've just chosen a crowd that's, Willing to listen and, yeah, and seek it out. <laughs> yeah, who, who want to learn from it. And yeah, then, like, the they're seeking. Committed, yeah, they get yeah. a lot out from it. So, Dude, that's so good. Okay, so in terms of the next steps of your course, like how do you go about actually once everybody has their foundation and they're rocking, <laughs> like how do you do to support and maintain and like hold each other accountable? What yeah. does the accountability side look like? Oh, it's awesome, man. Well, I'll just quickly go for a structure. First three weeks, figure out like exactly what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Week four, we get like how to understand like a lot of biological stuff. Week five, um, we figure out a lot of masculine tools, purpose, beauty, danger, king, warrior, magician, magician, lover, how we can use them in a practical sense. Weeks okay, wait, you've lost me. We need to slow down now. <laughs> I don't know what those things are. You know, I could be like, oh, yeah, cool, cool. With that. Yeah, go to the next one. I don't know what they are. You know, <laughs> let, what? Me keep, let me explain the rest. <laughs> okay. We're going to back. Week six, we figure out what you need to create with like your whole life, like what that is to serve your people with your purpose. And yeah, okay. What, like, who do you want to serve? And then, and then we start creating, but we start doing that. Like you have to do it. Yeah. Week seven, like we learn. Up. Yeah, we learn the masculine and feminine balance and how that works like internally so that you can start navigating your way through. Mm. And then week eight is we go over that triangle, but there's a lot of other just crazy stuff in there. I don't share too much on week eight because it's a damn secret. It's uh, <laughs> like the best one ever. So yeah, back to week five. to get that one, week, motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> week five is um, yeah, pretty wild. Pretty wild. I'll go yeah. through one of the um, 
method- methodologies if you yeah, yeah. to hear. Let's go. This is a cool one and I hope you like this one. Right. Um, it's just called Purpose, Beauty, Danger and then it's out of the book Wild at Heart by John Elridge. And I love it. It's such, such, such a good, powerful book. And I ended up writing down this diagram out of um, someone that I was working with. They asked me some serious questions. I was like, I got the answer, bro. <laughs> I got the answer right here. Um, and essentially to get to the diagram, think about just like that hierarchy we talked about before and having your physiological health, knowing your business, your career and purpose. So that's like the first tier. You've got to hit that first. Then the next thing you can focus on is the three different, um, uh, the three different functions, purpose, beauty, and danger. So once you sort out your health, you can start thinking about these and map them out. I'll start with beauty. A lot of the time what happens and what, what you have is like, you don't want those three things separate. You want to have them balanced. You want your purpose and beauty and danger balanced. Now, the thing is that people separate them. Beauty, for example, comes up forever you find beauty in your life. Majority for people, it's a partner, like majority of people. But it can be wherever you get feminine, creative. It could be like poetry, whatever it is. Um, like Carl Jung said, there's three things that's like three bad things that men get caught up doing and it's uh, masculine activity, feminine passivity, and then chasing intellectual game too much getting caught up in the intellectual which some people do just research and never go anywhere mm. but for beauty for example is if you get if you don't have a purpose and you haven't got a healthy relationship with danger as a man um it's very easy for yourself to attach yourself to beauty and make that your purpose instead and what happens is if you're way too attached to beauty you come to clingy because you need her or you start to withdraw because it's too much and whichever happens, she goes or you do something bad. Danger. If you don't have a healthy relationship with danger, who do you think it impacts? You. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because you, you're too scared. Bro, it's going to show up in yeah. adventure. Porn, masturbation, video games. Um, it's going to show up in drinking, drugs, alcohol, taking big risks that you shouldn't. So you're going to be really lazy and passive or you're going to be like taking way too much action on stuff. You can see some people are obsessed with martial arts. Other people are like, how far can I push it with drugs and alcohol if I can get away with it? People doing like heaps of dangerous stuff. It's like, where is your relationship with dangerous the guy? Gambling, like all, anything that sees a thrill or adrenaline. And as a I dude, had a pretty good relationship with danger growing up. Did you? Yeah. That's awesome. I did heaps of dangerous sports. Like extreme sports, my thing. Like I'm not good. Well, I never was really practiced in ball sports and stuff. So I never did them. What'd you do? Downhill mountain bike riding. <sighs> Like <laughs> snowboarding, yes, surfing. Oh yeah, all the good stuff. <laughs> Great stuff, <laughs> yeah, man. Just but I could do like rock climbing. I was like, yes, I'm yeah, <laughs> yeah. I believe every man should have a sense of when, thrill. When you say like a bad relationship with um, risk, is that more like risk taking, unhealthy risk taking? I'd say yeah, it would be. Yeah. If you don't have a healthy relationship with risk taking, it'll oh. show up in a negative way. I think yep. the social one side of that Huge. is the biggest. Oh, big time. Mm. Yeah, dude, you self sacrifice. Or you um, isolate big time if you mm, haven't got one. There it's, you go. It's crazy. And like a lot of time it's to, to prove yourself um, if you haven't got a healthy relationship with it. So where does it show up? Because people are like, you can have that in business, like depending where it is. Like for me, jumping on this podcast, I got excitement, thrill before I come here. When I got on stage and like speak in front of people or I compete or something like that, I'm like, whoa, mm. crazy. I get some big name person on my podcast. I'm like, oh my yeah. God, whatever it is. Like it's amazing um, yeah, it's good. To, ha- to have all of that there. It's a healthy relationship with it. Like whatever you're doing, figure that out integrate it because if you don't it's going to impact you and then purpose is the silent killer because you can find your purpose but if you don't have a healthy relationship with danger some sort of outlet for that thrill and you don't have a good relationship with beauty midlife crisis is that because you won't be able to be comfortable with confidence dude well you can be still confident like Uh you can have like your purpose and your vision your mission sorted out but like if it's not like let's say you sort of understand what your purpose is and you're working towards that and then all you're doing is working towards that and then you hit the age of like 45, 50, 55, 60, 70 and that's all you've done and like that's it and then you haven't had an experience with the family. It's like you haven't gone around the hero's journey. Oh, okay. You yeah. haven't done that. You have had no thrill or adrenaline. You get that age, you're like, I need to travel the world. I need to do some crazy stuff. I need to have a family, fall in love. I haven't felt any emotions other than just dopamine in my business and burnout like that's it so purpose is like the silent killer but man i see people like, like the age of 30 like already there, just like yeah. what the hell do i do i feel like people are reaching that right. soon these days oh yeah dude like one of my um clients was like he grew up dirt biking and was like thinking about you know like his family stuff and he's like for some reason i keep like resenting and we we're talking about it and, and it was like okay written to reconnect with himself 
and get a damn dirt bike. And it took ages. And he got his dirt bike and reconnected with himself. And he's like, oh my God, I'm so much better at my business. I'm so much better at this other stuff. I'm showing up as the best person ever. Like, this is amazing. Oh my God, I just needed to figure these few things out. Mm. Yeah. Pow. That's why. So what were some of those for you to like get you in? Because you obviously have a pretty awesome foundation by the looks of it. You're strong. You got a business that's going Staunch. well. You got a community, you know. <laughs> well, Bro, I'm just living it. To be completely honest, it's super overwhelming and I'm so proud of myself for it. Like I'm so, my, my life is awesome and I'm awesome. I'd want to hang out with me if I wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't me, I'd be like, I'll hang out with you, bro. You're yeah, sick. Dude. But seriously, when I went over all these things and thought about it, I was like, well, I get all of my danger from the public speaking, from competing, from leg day, Saturday morning in the gym. Mm. Yeah. You guys invited hey, if you want to come. I love going uh, to the gym. Oh, dude, it's the best. Yeah, so this year I've really... Going hard at it. I, I, mean. I was an athlete, and um, when I was playing basketball, and I was gonna go um, pro and everything, um, that taught me oh, yeah. what comes with exercise and fitness, you know. Um, however, now I'm, I've moved to my creative side, and that's what I'm driving now because I have a, a, a dream of allowing others to um, discover that creative side. You are at the road of SX leads to excess leads to the palace of wisdom. Yeah. Soak it in. Push it, bro. Yeah. He's a stud. He's awesome. <laughs> He's awesome. Appreciate He's it. It's so good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I get a lot of, like, my danger for that sort of stuff. And, like, I keep it in because I love it. And then, uh, like, beauty for me was sort of, like, it's always sort of been they've had a real healthy relationship with the feminine and I worked on it. Like, it's very easy for me to get creative. Yeah. What feminine. are your creative outlets? Well, it was mine digitally, digitally creating. So like creating a lecture, creating a diagram, like reading through the things that I do, creating a YouTube video, creating like the actual program and then like talking with people all the time, like get, being able to get into a creative flow with um, conversation as well as my body, like humbly as possible saying this, like I'm a pro athlete, my body is beautiful. Like pro, natural, completely natural, no steroids and stuff. Not that chiseled at the moment, but it is. But you know, you you're like chiseled, bro. It's like the <laughs> the marble. You know, bro, you've you've Greek, moved the Greek marble gods. away. Yeah. Dude, you got a full yeah. Greek god body, dude. Yeah, I'm so proud of it, man. And sometimes I look in the mirror at myself and I'm like, God damn, that's beautiful, man. Yeah, <laughs> you you created that. Euphoric. Yeah, <laughs> so proud, yeah, dude. It is like seriously. I look at some of the statues and I'm like, like, because I've been to Greece, not Greece, but even just Rome and stuff, and look around. I'm like, I look better than that. One. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm lean, I look better than that. When I'm lean, yes. Um, and it's amazing. So I'm real proud of that. But um, also in a creative spaces, I love like ceremonies, like cacao ceremonies, intentional ceremonies, present ceremonies, um, like whatever they are, just intentional, whatever it is. Do you believe there's a purpose in ceremonies, and what would that be, really? They're sort of small initiations, and depends what they okay. are. Like a cacao ceremony, I believe, strengthens your gratitude muscle because you're spending that whole time being as grateful as possible and really allowing your like heart to open up. Oh, and yeah. if you can facilitate one of those, it's so beautiful, man, just having one of those ceremonies. Yeah. I like yeah, psychedelic nice. ceremonies as well. Yeah, There's a few of those that I really like. Sure. So there's just like a few things that I believe that are real awesome to that to get uh, feminine. But also I understand like the importance of a relationship and for where I was at in my life, I was like, cool, I need to like um, – definitely get a relationship so i was like okay what's do i need <laughs> yeah no, yeah. i don't need to commit to a relationship there's the next evolution for me like, oh, as yeah. a man i need to get good at this and it's going to help me grow um so i figured out everything that i wanted in a girl i was like what is this what are the weaknesses strengths everything and just wrote it down like, write all of it down bro wrote all of it down and i was like now how much energy can i give to this with my goals and stuff at the moment i was like five percent so i just spent like 10 to five minutes every night before i go to bed only 10 to five minutes at like 7 45 to eight o'clock <laughs> i would be like just talking about so on people, Instagram, seeing what's going off. Boom, yeah, just yeah. like on Instagram or the dating apps, or whatever. Like, I don't really head out, I'm in bed at like eight o'clock. So, I was like, I had yeah. on my, I had on my dating apps. I was <laughs> like, eight. if you don't go to bed, if you go to bed later than eight, 8 p.m., You're don't message me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, don't swipe. Uh, I was like, don't worry about it. There's no way, discipline, yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, so I'm, I'm in bed early, like, I'm not doing that. But over like a, I'd say like a year and a half period like there's some people who ended up seeing for a while and i was like oh this is really good but not the one oh, this is really good not the one and i was intentionally i'd commit as best as yes. i could from the start and then be like ah this isn't like working and then eventually i found this one that's working so good at the moment and like so the beauty side of things i get so much good positive energy from her so shout out chloe baby the best and she like delivers this Oh, just this such sacred feminine energy of just like play and creativity to the point where I don't even have to seek it anymore because it's just around oh, me. Yeah. I just look at her and I'm like, yeah. oh, fuck, that's so good. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That yeah. is so good. She's awesome. like dancing around doing something and I'm like, 
Yeah, energy. Oh, just join just, in. Just oh, let's just, love it. Just take that in. It's like the best thing ever. Yeah, it's great. Um, so that's sorted. I love that. And then like I know exactly what I'm doing for like my purpose. So for me, it's just keep doing and then evolve around the hero's journey. Hence why a relationship was the next step. So trying to balance that with all of my things, dreams, missions, and goals. For me at the moment is the perfect place to be in as I um, build that's everything. That's awesome. Now let me so. switch it up for a second. What is like – what would you say is like an ideal ceremony of manhood that we should have in our Western world? Oh, you've thought about this. You've, I know you've thought about I this. I haven't landed on it, bro. I've <laughs> thought about this so much of like, what is the um, number one? Uh, and I've mentioned psychedelics a few times, but they've used it in so many religions. Aborigines, mm. huge. Oh, dude, the cactus one. Dude. I've never done it, but like I've heard extensively. It's, it's, really it's like ayahuasca. Well. It's right hand on here. Yeah, yeah, apparently it's crazy. San Pedro or something it's called. But yeah, um, I, I think that's the Mexican one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if the Australian one. It they do. Boring. They have got Australian ayahuasca and stuff too. Yeah, which yeah, is pretty nuts. Um, like Aborigines, like make it and stuff. It's crazy, yeah. but um, yeah. So I thought that was like that's like a really good one because it's been used everywhere. However, it's like not the most practical because so many people are like are off it and not. And I feel like they'd only be a part of it. And they'd only be a part of it. I think. <laughs> my mind just gets so split between like independence, but also a really strong group of like professional like-minded people and doing something together with them, which is going to be very energetic lifting. Or do you take the road like yourself? So I'm, I'm, I've, I've thought about this so much because for me personally, people talk about mentors and all these things and I haven't been able to find any. So I find them within books and I find them in my friends. I'm so lucky because I try to deliver as much value as that my network is ridiculous. Like it's ridiculous. Anything that I want to know, business, success tips, mindset, marketing, social media and stuff. I'm like, oh, there, there it goes. You got to go. Hey, man. Yeah. yeah. Like literally it's, it's important. It's great. It is. It's so important. And that sort of like helped me move through with a whole bunch of things. And a lot of people like don't have that. But at the same time, like I did a lot of things for myself. Like I did all the hard work for building up the business. I did all the hard work for building up my body. I did all the hard work prepping all the things. Like I did all the things. I think it's really important having some sort of in independence, but in terms of like a specific ceremony, I haven't landed on it yet, but I will, <laughs> I will land on that what, for sure. What got you into fitness? Like, how did that all come about? Um, I wanted to get bigger than my dad so I can punch him in the face. <laughs> how, how old were you? That's, that's sort of like one thing as well. Cause he was big. Yeah. Like that, that's like 10% of it. Um, the main reason that I got into it was for acrobatics, believe it or not. Like I used to sing, dance and act when I was a kid. And then I, I like loved doing flips and stuff. And I remember this lady said to me once, she's like, oh, you do all these like salts and stuff. You should do kicking stuff, like type of tricks. And I'm like, hell no, I like the salts better. And she's like, yeah, but you're not muscly. Like, you're quite skinny. And I was like 15. I was like 15, 16. I was like, well, I always knew I was going to be big and muscly. So I might as well start now. I was just so committed to it, dude. And then it started and it didn't stop. That was it. That's I just, awesome. I just fell in love with it. As soon as I started, I was like, I'm, I'm not stopping. Um, Do you think it's like changed your life? Yeah, dude. Motivation and stuff like that? Everything, bro. Yeah. Everything. Sports power. It is pretty powerful. Every yes. single man should have a goal. And I do this in my program and everything. Every single man should have a goal to be a world-class athlete for whatever their idea of it is. Yeah. In some, yeah. It could be ping pong. I've been working at my, my target weight for too long. <laughs> <laughs> too long. But, but it depends what your ways, idea is. This year is like... You've been I've, on it. I've hit grind mode of this year, and a big part of it is learning like a like a hard work 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 ethic, mm. and just being able to silence or like overcome Commit. that voice in your head that tells you all the reasons not to, and just saying, "Fuck off, I'm doing it. I've yeah. already agreed to this." Yeah, I love that, dude. But fitness is the best metaphor, man. I use it for everything, mm. like literally all things business. It's, it, t it teaches you so much because oh, there's no off thing. It's like. It's every single day, like four to five meals <laughs> every day. Can't oh. miss them unless you're like traveling or doing something. One day here or there, doesn't matter. But it's pretty much every single day is showing up because it's hard as shit to build muscle. Like yeah. hard as shit to build muscle. And you can be putting your effort in for one hour every single day. But then that also forces you to recover really well. Like you got to be recovering and shit too. Um, so it makes you have all of those other practices put in as well. So it's pretty wild and whatever everyone's like doing, I think they should have their own goal for world class athlete and be hitting that because it's. All right. So we're week five. Dude, week five. Yeah. Purpose, beauty, danger was one of them. Yep. Yep. So wait, what's week six? <laughs> week six is like, it's called creation. We're going from a whole thing here. Creation is figuring out specifically like what you need to create sort of to, you know, make your life a masterpiece. 
for whatever. Like you figure out your vision, your mission, your purpose. You understand why it's there. You understand all the tools and the biological things that you need to do. And it's like, now what do you need to create? The biological things right you now. need to What are the biological things you really need to do? Majority is just sleeping and eating, to yeah. be completely honest. Like straight Very down. Important. What's the most, of, like how do you optimize your sleep? Well, it's, my, oh man, so much. Hey? There's mm. so much here. So yeah. the easiest thing I can say for everyone is yeah. don't eat three hours before you go to bed. Three hours? Why is yeah. that? Well, what's like takes up the, how many organs have you got for digesting? Oh, okay, fair enough. Everything. <laughs> Everything, right? Literally yeah. all of your damn organs. Your teeth are organs, bro. What do they yeah, use? Chew true. food. Yeah. So all your energy goes to digesting food, man. Right. So if you eat Overnight. before you go to bed. It's going to be digesting it. I recorded all on an ordering going on right here so you so can see dad, all the stuff. He's on one meal a day. Is he? Yeah, at lunch. He's on a carnivorous diet. Yeah. Like a health, health nut. Um, and Jim's like, what, six days a week. So, yeah. <laughs> what a beast. Yeah. I know, I know. Yeah, that's Isn't tough. It? Yeah, that's oh, crazy with crazy. the one meal. He's in one big ass meal. Oh, yeah. Five o'clock, three hours before bed. Get a good sleep. Wake <laughs> yeah, up. Massive steak. Good to go. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, love yeah, that. Yeah, he's lean, mean fighting yeah. machine. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, not eating three hours before bed. Yeah. Do you believe in that idea of like uh, eating between a 12-hour window and eight-hour window? What is it? Not really. No? I don't really believe in that. So that's like intermittent fasting. And I did like a whole bunch of research. I got a whole course on fasting. I've got yep. articles on fasting on my website. Mm. Um, people can read about it. It's pretty wild. I could create a full course on it. And I was like, mm, intermittent fasting. It's okay. It was like an introduction for sure. And a lot of people start doing that. But the benefits of fasting you actually get is around the 22, 24 hour mark and then some. So 24, 48 hours and 72 hour fast, are like the best fast that you can do for sure. Um, so when you say fast, you mean like a water fast or a yeah, juice fast or what kind of fast? Only, only water, water, water fast, salt, water, salt and coffee. Like that's about it. That's all you'd want to really have. Um, sometimes I call these things enhanced fast. We can just optimize using certain fats, get your brain going. If you're an entrepreneur and you want to like kick some ass or if you just want to be like in the zone, you can like use fats with your coffee and stuff. Wild, um, real good for your guts, good clean out. But for the main purposes of fasting, the best thing is you want to like get rid of junk cells in your body. And mm. you do Vegetable that. Vegetable oil is big for that, isn't it? Yeah, bro. It's wild. And junk DNA. And your body starts cleansing it after about 22, 24 hours. And it spikes a few times throughout the, the like two, three days. So if you did a 48 hour of, yeah, 48 hour fast, would it get rid of all of it? Or would you, like, how many times would you need to do it to, like, clear? Well, Let's say you're eating, like, a healthy diet in between okay. those. I'll use my dad as an example because he had a cancer scare. He had cancer scares, blood test done, everything was screwed, real bad. And he's like, I'm like, Dad, you need to start fasting. You need one thing for health because he wasn't exercising and he's eating shit. And he's like, all right. So we started one 24-hour fast a week. Nine months later, I was like, I'm going to challenge you. Let's do 10 three-day fasts. That's every over week. the year. No, in a row. 10 three-day fasts. So we'd do Once one week, week. He'd start on Tuesday. Wouldn't eat till what, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever it is, Thursday, Friday, like whatever it was. And then he'd eat whatever that day is. Um, over the 10 fasts, he lost like... 18 kilos. He'd never been healthier like in his entire life. He went back to the blood, uh, the doctors. They're like, there's no trace of cancer or whatever is here. There is all your blood test results are magic. Like they're all perfect. There's nothing out whatsoever. Everything is like optimized. It's like you've never even had this stuff beforehand. So That's it's just wild. the continuous practice of it, man. Like everyone knows that they, the stuff when they say with smoking, you give up smoking and it's like three months later, it's like your lungs are almost back to normal. So it's like it's the consistent practice of something. And it's the same thing with sleep, the same thing with eating. So there's this theory called the triage theory. Bruce Ames wrote about it. I learned it from Muscle Nerds. I say it's all the podcasts. Shout out Muscle Nerds. They're amazing. And uh, the theory is essentially if you don't have the micronutrients that your body needs, it digs into short-term stress. <laughs> so literally, if you're not well-fed enough, mm. your body pumps cortisol to deal with like, because it thinks I'm in a stress state because I'm not getting nutrients in. It's sort of like, this is an example. If you start drinking lots of water, like it acts as a diuretic because it's like, oh, cool, there's water coming in. Let's get rid of all of it. Same thing with like stress in your body. Oh, we've got ample amounts of nutrients coming in. We can let stress go. Like, we don't need any of that stuff. But you can track this, ah, which is a real cool thing. So there's an app you can use. There's different ones, sort of like MyFitnessPal, but there's another one called Chronometer, and it tracks all of your minerals and vitamins, your different types of proteins, your omega-3s, all your different fats, um, and your like certain carbohydrates that you have, high and low GI carbohydrates. But I just get people to look at the vitamins and minerals, and that's it, like, Screw looking at anything else that and some of your fats to make sure your proteins are up. They go through that. They do it for a week. Like, how do you feel for the end of this week from this other week? It's like, I probably never felt better in my entire life. <laughs> because, oh, bro, I feel fucking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that's like, well, huge. Yeah, because I notice I, if I miss a meal, I'm, I'm starving. 
I'm hungry and angry. <laughs> hangry, bro. Oh, dude. <laughs> heavy, heavy. It gets me. And uh, like, because I have like this subconscious idea was like, I want to stay lean. I want to like, you know, I don't want to put too much weight on us. I'm going to potentially get fat like my dad did. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that. Um, but I'm also lean and have always been lean. So, and I eat and I go to the toilet and I've never gained, I've never been over 70 kilos in my life. Nice. So like. <laughs> do you want to get over 70 kilos? I do. I want to be 73. Nice. That's my goal. I'm like 66, 67. Everything's, think about it, it goes up and down when you're looking at certain things. Like, so you have to go with periods of time where it's like, oh, you're going to have a little bit more, then you drop off, and you have a little bit more, then you drop off. You just don't want to go, road of SX leads to the palace of wisdom and just like go, oh, one way, then go get fat. Like, you don't do that. No, but I don't want to get fat. You would put on a couple of kilos and then drop back a kilo and then put on a couple of kilos and drop back a kilo. But the best way to do anything for anything for anyone is just to hit your micronutrients and, so what, how do you hit your micronutrients? Well, you've got to figure out nutrient-dense foods that you like. Yeah, that's a big thing, isn't it? And that's, the, that's why I get people to track it through a thing because then they're like, oh, then they're forced to be in the position like, what the hell do I eat? And they're like, eggs. Whoa, this is heaps of good stuff. I there. love eggs. Salt, like a good quality salt, like Celtic salt or something. Or they put it in not pink. Pink Himalayan salt is good. However, there's a lot of like trace minerals in it these days, like plastic ones. So you got to be careful the ones that you actually get because yeah, it's like so OG smashed. Himalayan salt. Yeah, you got to get this. You just got to be careful. Or like some real high quality, like sea salt. But Celtic salt's tracked. It's it's from like there's only a couple of sources. It's made a certain way, very specific. So that all the minerals are very. Shout like, out the Celtics. Shout out the Celtic salt, baby. So you put that on stuff and you're like, holy, all my minerals and vitamins are going up heaps. Like bone broth, boom, goes up. There's certain like, it's just like you have four pieces of fruit a day, of like different fruits. And you're like, what? It's got all these vitamins and stuff in here and I'm not eating these? What? Like, it's crazy. So yeah, diversity, bro. <laughs> diversity in your diet, That's for it. sure. And yeah, some veggies are not created equal. That is for sure. What are the best veggies? Uh, I really like mushrooms, man. Yeah, mushrooms. Are yeah, they're, what, they're what kind of mushrooms? Um, like all of them, to be honest. Like I went for a stage where, like, because I eat like a lot of, I got my DNA tested, and one of the things that were like, you need lots of cruciferous vegetables, so broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, cabbage, and like, you know, eat that for a while. You start farting all over the place, man. I was like, God damn, I got some gut stuff going. I was eating way too many cruciferouses. What can I do? So I just changed it up to like. Uh, just like capsicums, a few some other easy, easy things, but I wanted the nutrients. Up. I like all those things, except for Brussels sprouts. Just Dude, I sounds love Brussels good. Cook it in butter as well. Um, but like I ate so much of those, and I changed, and I was like, "How can I get these micronutrients in?" So I just changed all mushrooms. I'd eat like enoki mushrooms, taki mushrooms, round mushrooms, still medley. swish mushrooms. I <laughs> just do all the exotic mushrooms. Boom, mm. track that. All my minerals went. I was like, "Nice, yeah. <laughs> beautiful." And how do you find seasoning? Obviously, seasonings when a lot of the sweets come in, a lot of sugar and stuff like that. Yeah. And obviously, you probably don't want to eat heaps of sugar in your diet because yeah. we all, you know, we know sugar is like cancer. Like it's not good. Yeah, I think there's a time and place for it, though. Depends. I think for like for like uh, psychological stuff, like sometimes because we've been grown up on it, you just oh, need to have a little curt bit tart in every now and then. Oh, the little, little Magnum ice cream or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, uh, you got to have that in some way, and you, and you can burn it off really quick. Like, one good thing about sugar, yes, it's bad, but you can burn off like the energy and get rid of it and detoxify it really quick, especially if you've got a really healthy diet as well. Your detoxification ability in your body is fantastic. So, like, it's not an excuse to do anything if you haven't got everything optimized. Don't <laughs> try not to eat any of that stuff whatsoever because your body's never going to detoxify it. But yeah, it's basically, yep. Yeah. Eight mushrooms, bro. How do you season? Oh, season, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I just use salt and like olive oil. Okay. So I'm addicted to like some good quality aioli. Like I get some organic oh, aioli at the aioli moment, bro. Great. I like just literally with a meal, I just get like three carrots. And I'll just dip them in the aioli. I'm just like, eating carrots. Oh, that's so fair. The moment. So fair. Okay. So what do you think about, because uh, obviously olive oil has its burning threshold and I've heard it actually gets carcinogenic or some stuff and it's really not good for you when you burn it. So well, I really trust Ben Greenfield, man. And he's like, if you get a really good quality extra virgin, um, like extra virgin cold press olive oil, he's like the smoking point's a lot higher than what people think for him. So you got to kind of test. Heard that. I've heard that before. Yeah. yeah. That's good that. to hear because I love it. Because I love it. Yeah. Cooking in it. So what I would do is just recommend, um, and I have done this before, I guess I, pr- I just prefer cooking in it, but I'd cook in something like, Probably nothing like really. Fats? Vinegar, I like. I do like grass fed beef fats. Yeah, like I've lard. used that before. Is in beef suet, um, lard, and I like um, butter as well. But sometimes I'll just cook in nothing and just put some olive oil on top. 
Like literally, if you're going to make it something at the bottom of the pan, put like salt and vinegar down because vinegar makes it not stick. You just got to like move it around a little bit, your food, if you got it in the pan. But vinegar works awesome. Anything Maybe. sticking, put a bit of vinegar in there. Uh-uh, not sticking no more. And then just, yeah, put <laughs> some more. I didn't even know that dude. one. A little bit of vinegar. Yeah, that's, that's a good. Yeah, dude. Some good quality stuff. Have you tried ghee before? Oh, bro, I love ghee. It's so good. Dude, ghee so flavor. I, I, oh, my God. I could like eat it off the spoon. Oh. I eat it off the spoon, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I literally sometimes oh. I'm like, <laughs> way better than butter. All right. Yeah. Flavors everything. Yeah, dude, I love it. I was actually thinking about that in the way here because I like <laughs> missed a meal and I want to get one. And I was at the shops and I was like, do I just buy some ghee and eat it before the podcast? Because it's going to be good for my brain. <laughs> Jeez, so fair. I decided not to. I was like, maybe not because it's the whole jar of ghee. <laughs> <laughs> so your what audience, how big is your audience at the moment in terms of like your coaching programs and like what's the goal is for you? Yeah, so we've got about 50 people in the coaching program and then I've got like, um, like six or seven one-on-one clients. So, basically, overcome the chaos. I just intake ten to twelve a month. That's it. Yeah, not doing any any more than that because I can't manage just too much, um, like to manage and stuff. And it's good for the people because then they can actually get to know each other and all those things as well. So I think that's really good. And then for the modern leaders accountability group, we've got a capacity of a hundred, and currently we've got in there like seven or eight people, which is really cool. So, that's awesome yeah good on you and do you yeah. want to get to like Tony Robbins level is that that oh, goal sure. yeah definitely bro awesome yeah straight up like my goal sort of like to be Australia's Tony Robbins with the stuff help people do stuff man take action on things I'd love that that'd be yeah. the best but not Tony Robbins I mean Corey Boutwell I like yes. what I'm doing mm. so. you are Corey <laughs> yeah. I am Corey yeah. so yeah, I just want to help out everyone especially Australians because I think like where we're at in terms of like myth religion and stuff um, and not having like a real good sense of, you know, how hard was it when you, before you got all spiritual and stuff, bro, like what That's was life hard, like, man. you just like, there's nothing like this is crazy statistic. And I said this on another podcast today is out of the book boy crisis by John Gray and Will Ferrell. And that is like the statistics is something crazy. And it's, it's very close to it. 99% of women have babies. 50% of men have children. Right. So like basically like, 50% of men Only have 50% children. of men have babies, bro, have children. What? Yeah, dude. Crazy. That's a statistic they did. Not sure if it's Australia. You have to read it out of the book and quote it in there because I just got it from that book. Yeah, that's epic. They'd had it in US, which is nuts, okay? Now, they sort of talked about this a little bit. Is that because men just, half of them just can't get laid? <laughs> like, what's no, going on? no, that's the thing. It's because all girls want a baby because if uh, uh, modern days, the like modern these days, like, if you think about 1940s to like now, like women were just like housewives in 1940s. Mm. Now, yeah. girls got their purposes too. And they're out there crushing them and I'm all for that. It's the best thing. Like my partner, she's got a purpose, she's crushing it and it's like the best thing ever to see. But for girls who don't find their purpose and they don't have it and they never know what it is, it's dude, they can just have a family. Yep. They can have all the purpose around the kids. They can like get all of their feminine energy, empathy, caring, nurturing, all that stuff. Boom, mm. right there. And society's framed around family, um, like, like uh, what do you call it? So you, uh, you get your purpose out of a family. You know 100%. What I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. They can. They, they, they can do that. Now, for men, it's a little bit different because, like, as it, like controversial as it's to say, but, like, the family majority of the time isn't the purpose. Men need to have, like, their own mission, their own thing that they're doing. Oh, for so sure. that they can, you know, one of the things they can pro- provide for yeah. their family, but so that they can feel worthy enough to even have a family, bro. That's right, yeah. Like, how would you even have a family if you can't even, like, trust yourself or do stuff? You've got to prove to yourself that you're good enough – to have a family and do all these different things and that you've like whatever your ambitions and stuff are and your goals that you're working towards those and that you have the ability to do those so that you can do this wow, for that's, someone that's else. That's very true. It's crazy. Yeah. So we've got to find that purpose and this vision and mission first because if we've got no one to protect, then why are we protecting? You know that's what I mean? Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, right? Like, and it's, and like it, we need to do something to be able to protect people and that's like whatever your vision and your purpose is. So for men need to create their own myth and they need to create their own sort of myth, personal, personal religion to themselves and get connected to that around a bunch of other men who are also doing it as well so that they feel welcome to do it and that they're accountable to actually living it so that they can start like actually progressing for a life so they don't grow up and hit the age of 40, you know, mm. buying silly yeah. cars and toys and stuff, just Trying reenacting to look, look their childhood it. dreams. Yeah, that's it. I love it, man. I love it. It's dope. I've been talking to you about like yeah. for days there. I love it. Yeah, I love dope. this shit. Fuck yeah. It's crazy stuff. Oh, man. So I want to know, what's your relationship to religion personally? 
Yeah. Mine. Yeah. Do you have any relationship to any religions or? I just don't know, bro. <laughs> I just I'm just so in the unknown about it. Yeah. Like I research a lot of it, understand all of their stories, and what it just points to me basically is all the religion stuff. Is it just like I love all the spiritual stuff, by the way. There's so much unknown out there that I'm just so unaware of. But man, when it just comes to religion, it just keeps po- pointing me back to the hero's journey, man. And just being is there like, a God. Is there even God? I don't know, man. Well, what about Honestly, through I don't, your I don't know. psychedelic experiences? Have you had that like there experience is, of like it depends on absolute your definition. oneness and yeah. like the being part yeah. of this like cosmic web of existence and being in the presence yep. of Buddha and it's like this nurturing thing? Yep. But I just don't know. There is like this one thing. For, oh, that's God. Like, there is. Well, <laughs> Man, the, the oneness. Just, the, the there's all. so many versions of God. Yeah. So yeah, but I feel like, like they're all just like stories that all come back to, you know, like the start of the Bible, right? And by the word of God, the heavens and the earth were created. It's like word, it's frequency. It's just this energy. It's the all prevailing. And have you read the seven hermetic principles? I haven't. Oh, dude. I should though. Oh, bro. <laughs> They're like seven universal laws of existence. Yeah. They're fucking awesome. That all you bro, love you said them. resonated with me. Yeah. Uh, I've got that written down actually on one of my to-do lists. There was somewhere I screenshot or something. I was like, get the this seven hermetic principles. Yeah. Oh, bro. You can even just look it up and like find out what they yeah. are and have a small breakdown. It, they're awesome. You know, it's like the law of polarity, like everything so above as so below. So below. Wow. I've researched them before, but I can't remember anything. I definitely. Yeah. But they're just, for, but, and then the Kybalian is like attached to that. And the Kybalian essentially a definition of God, which is God is the all and we are the all experiencing itself. So yeah. even when your ego is to the max and, you know, let's say you're the high priest and you're like, I am the message of God. You are the still God experiencing itself. Yeah, that's what Paul Check says. I really and you like. never know. You never know everything. And we never don't know. We will never know everything because we're not the all. 100%. And that's why I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> have, 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 you, have, you, have you read into um, Alan Watts? Yeah, I love Alan Watts' Same. stuff, bro. Yeah, mm. his stuff resonates with me like a lot. Yeah, I know, yeah. His stuff, his, I love all his stuff on not the ego. Not too much. It's very, it's very Eastern. He's got like yeah. a very Eastern approach to like religion and stuff. So I don't know, man. I like all the stories. And like I tell you, like I'm reading them every day. Like all of the different, like I, I literally, there's in the origins and history of consciousness. We went through so much of the Egyptian book of the dead in there and the story of like Osiris and his brother and what like happened to him and how the whole world was made from those. And even like Greek myth and stuff, it goes a lot into Greek myth, how the world was made and all these different things. And then also understanding God, I just... I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. I sort of think like you know, when it just comes down to like those big questions and the meaning of life, I believe it is choice. And I try to get in my in my own head, I try to think about, cool, so in this own world that we're living right now, like, man, you're just experiencing everything for you. I know, I know. Like right now, all of this stuff, it's like making I'm, just, sense. I'm just a shape moving around that you're experiencing. And same with you guys, it's all yeah. just lights and shapes. I'm sitting here and doing this. Whatever experience I want to take here before I pass away is just like, Whatever's mine to take, and all we get is emotions and memories. So, got to make every single second yeah. count, and I make sure that I need to be choosing to be the best version of like yep. myself mm. every single day, and bring in like the best that I can. So, I sort of take like an individualistic approach to that, and sort of think like, okay, like even like the other it wasn't uh, too long ago, it was a few nights ago, I was doing gymnastics with a friend, and I was spotting him for like a backflip, and he really hurt his ankle. We thought he broke it, but he's really hurt it. And he was like, it's not you, man. Like, don't worry about it. Like, um, he's like, please don't feel bad. And of course I was going to feel bad. Like I was spotting him while he was doing it. He hurt himself. He was like, no, no, like there's no reason to feel bad. And one of my other friends said, yeah, you shouldn't feel bad, bro. Like he jumped back and bowed halfway through. You prevented him from snapping his neck. And for me personally, I had to stop and think. And I just said, like, this is your own experience right now. Like you can sort of take like away from this what you need. And like he has his own experience and you have your own experience and you don't have to feel bad, bro. Like mm. you don't have to. This is your life. You don't have to you don't have to feel bad. It's your choice for how you want to feel right now. Make the most out of it. Say sorry. Say how you feel to the guy because you like him and get on to the next thing. And for me, I was like, that's a little powerful self reflection that I had. Like it was just so quickly for that. And it just made me get back into like a real good mood. So I sort of take, you know, like your own personal approach to whatever God is. It's I can sort of think as you go. Sometimes it's a bit too much going yeah. in for all the big things. You can go so deep in, into all that stuff, but mm. I believe it's sort of like oneness. Like, like just, I, I think it's just your body, man. Like to be yeah. completely honest, like being your oneness. body and your mind. Like that's it. I, I, I wanna, I wanna ask you. Like, um, there's this quote, like the power um, that I'm that I that I said. It was like his word was one accord with the universe. His power, power is in the tongue. 
I don't need permission to be me, the real definition of keeping it real. When you come to choice. Does it make sense? Please repeat it. All right, so I can't remember it. Because, <laughs> okay, this is the, um, the power is in the tongue. His word was one accord with the universe. I don't need permission to be me, the real definition of keeping it real. Yeah, I like that. Yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah, because when you were talking about choice, I was thinking like we have to know ourselves first before we can make decisions. 100%. Yeah. And one real good practical approach to this is like Frederick Nietzsche's quote, and I'm going to butcher it right now, but it's something along the lines of it's like there is more wisdom in your body than like your higher spirituality or philosophy, something like that is what he says. Mm -hmm. And when I just think about stuff like, as we can think about like the universe, God, energies, Mm. frequencies, I love all that stuff. I'm I'm into it big time. However, I just think the simple fact that you can eat food and it energizes your body, like you're eating and chewing meat and a vegetable and a plant and it's going into like your esophagus, into your body and it's like digesting through the system into your body to fuel your fatigue and your energy or to put on weight is so fucking spiritual, bro. Mm. Yes. I think going to a supermarket and choosing the food that you want to buy is so spiritual. Mm. I think going like to the gym and just literally just watching like, this is going to grow, bro. Like that is hectic. I think that is so spiritual, man. I think looking at your partner in the eyes and just like telling him like, I love you and feeling it at the same time, just open your heart up is spiritual, bro. I think literally when you get an injury about something, you hurt yourself. Ah, fuck, I hurt myself real bad right now. That's spiritual, bro. I think everything, like, when you get nervous with something, you feel it in your chest or your throat, like, that's spirit working through. I believe just our function as humans for everything we're doing in our body, our heart just going boom. Yep. That's boom. why I said, that's why spiritual, I said bro. his word was one accord with the universe because words are powerful. Yeah, bro. It's, and then spiritual is in between those two. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Mm. Yeah. It's crazy, so yeah. Good. Yeah, I love it. I love it, man. Yeah. No, oh, we're done. <laughs> this is it. Well, that was thanks amazing. For with that. that was like great. the greatest conversation ever. <laughs> oh, bro, thank you. That makes yeah. me feel really special, man. Yeah, that's that. awesome. I love being here. Thank yeah. you for hosting. Thanks for asking awesome questions and being interested. I love talking to people. <laughs> you ever noticed? <laughs> yeah, well, you, thanks man. for creating the that's space. That's why I did like, this. Yeah, I, love, I love having a chit chat. Yeah, that's yeah, what's dude. your voice. And you, like, you're amazing, dude. Just putting it. He's great. Hey, yeah. Like, you're super knowledgeable. All the personal development stuff. Like, you could create a course. Like, honestly, and people could do it. Like, seriously, your wisdom is fantastic. And I love all the things if you add. And I'm going to take those away and um, really receive them and use them for other stuff as well. So, man, there's more chats to have for sure. <laughs> oh, there's yeah. more I chats to I, have. I was already thinking, like, we need another chat. <laughs> yeah, there's more <laughs> chats to have for there's sure. Yeah. Oh, any, Owen, oh, anything you'd like to say before we Just chop out? Thanks for coming on. Hey, uh, I've learned a lot, I, even though I'm quite younger than you guys. That's very knowledgeable, I suppose. So. Yeah, you, uh, so how, how old are you, Owen? I'm only 20. Well, I just turned 20. Bro, imagine being 20 and learning all this shit. But I, I was 19. You, you were doing I was 19. Oh, like, dude, like I know I didn't say much, but I just took it in. Dude, uh, it's fair. the most important thing ever, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm jealous that you're your age yeah. doing all I'm, this stuff. I'm also going through it, you know. I'm taking it in as well. I'm taking it in as well. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's never too late. We're taking it in. We're just taking it in. <laughs> <laughs> we're plugged in. We're taking we're it in. We're in the matrix. Let's in go. our own world right now. Yeah. <laughs> we, oh, oh, Sad Guru said this wild thing the other day. And there was oh, yeah. in a video. And it was like, you are the universe. We are so blessed in this human experience. And we take it for granted because you're like part of the universe. You're this fucking animal that experiences life but you get to have your own universe inside your head your yeah. own one you have your own universe <laughs> you inside your, your head no one can tell <laughs> like, what to do dude wow. have you seen the but stuff no, like but joe no one can see it everyone yeah. can, yes yeah, right dude yeah. that's like oh. joe Dispenza. they did this crazy thing of like they zoomed into your neural networks of what they could see oh. and they took a photo of that and then they took a photo of the universe and oh. it just looks the fucking really? same yes, bro dude, yeah. <laughs> yes. dude. legit yeah this world wow. is crazy be all anything you'd like to say before we cut out Nah, thank you so much. Like, I learned a lot. And it's reaffirming things that I'm already affirming out of my work. You know, it's like, it's crazy. And I already had a couple conversations with Hamish. And this was such a good conversation all together. Like, we just 
absorbing it. I'm just motivated to get shit done. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who's listening, go get some damn get shit done. done. Yeah. And Bjorn, keep going, man. Where can we Bet find you. you? Oh, man. So I'm most active on my Instagram, Instagram <laughs> Corey Boutwell, C-O-R-E-Y-B-O-U-T-W-E-L-L. I'm most active in there. Please send me a message with anything. All of my stuff is all linked on there. I do have a website, coreyboutwell.com, but that's specific for like some articles that I've got and for Overcome the Chaos, it's like a sales page. <laughs> if you're interested in that, that's basically what it is. I also have my own podcast called Corey Boutwell Podcast and it's on all platforms and I'm on like YouTube as well. I'm pretty active on there. So they're the main places that you can find me. Um, I'd say please shout out. Please send a message if you listen to any of this stuff and can't wait for everyone who's listening to listen to it and reshare it and post it everywhere you guys studs. Beautiful. Thank you very much for coming on. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your authenticity, sharing about your life in very intimate ways and actually, you know, pulling apart what it, what your version of living is and right. how you actually go about it and how you're sharing with people. Like, thank you. This is stuff people need to start living with. 100%. And that's very important. Like nearly every um, tier of life, like if it's education, employment, you know, these principles are very important in all lives because it's the essence of us. Oh. Uh, yeah. 100% man yeah. agree, man. Right, Beautiful Put the mics down Thanks. Play the outro <laughs> It's done Unless yeah. you had something to say <laughs> That's it guys Alright thank you <laughs>